Good evening, everyone. I'm going to start this meeting. So today, I don't have my agenda in front of me. Today's April 1st, April Fools. I knew what the date was. I'll call this meeting to order. All right, so up first will be the invocation, Pastor Steve Ferris from the First Baptist Church of Destin. Thank you for being here. I want to share just uh, something briefly with you. It's always an honor and a privilege to come here. You know, last church we was at, we shared the parking lot with the city hall for years. But it's a real honor to be here today because Saturday I had a heart attack. 99% blockage. God's good. So, amen. All right. Father, thank you for your goodness and your grace. And Lord, it is great to be here. And you are a shield, our fortress, and a mighty help in our time of need. And Lord, so many times we just call on you. And, and Lord, you, you just work things out. We're so glad you're in control. And Lord, uh, we just thank you for this city and all these people that take their time and their energy, Lord, to make this a better place to live. And Lord, as we prayed before, we don't always agree, but Lord, uh, we need to hear each other out. And Lord, things don't get done unless there's unity in one accord. So we just pray for that tonight. And Lord, even more so on a, on a nas national level, Lord, with our country and all the things that's happened and and around the world. And Lord, we just, we just want to give you praise and honor for watching over us and being our, our protector. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, if everyone can please put your hand over your heart. Repeat after me. For the pledge, I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Awesome. All right, Steve, can you hit that button for me? I'll be up there in a second. All right, so if you didn't hear Steve, he said no one has an excuse today. <laughs> All right, pledge. All right, so at this time, I'll entertain a motion to approval of the agenda. Motion is second. I'll call the vote. All right, eyes have it for the board while it's loading unanimously. There we go. All right, so up first will be the proclamation, uh, Arbor Day Celebration Proclamation. So we'll move to the front. Ryan, I'm, I'm handing it over to Ryan. All right, City of Destin Proclamation, Destin Arbor Day. Whereas in 1872, Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than one million trees in Nebraska, Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil and and sand by wind and water, re reduce heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of businesses in the area, and beautify our community, they are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Bobby Wagner, on behalf of the City of Destin and the Council, do hereby proclaim April 26, 2024, as Arbor Day in the City of Destin, Florida, and that all citizens are urged to support the efforts to protect our trees and woodlands, and that further, all citizens are urged to plant trees and gladden hearts and promote the well-being of present. <laughs> Of our, and preserve the future for generations to come. All right, thank you for that. Do you have anything to say? Oh, yeah. oh uh, you know, as, as many people probably know, I run uh, Trees on the Coast, which is a nonprofit of 501c3 in the area, so this day is always my work day, so I do love it, but it's always the day I'm sweating the most, so it's a, it's a bittersweet moment. Um, so, as, as so, um, my favorite tree is an oak tree, the live oak particularly. And so if we're urging people to plant trees, I urge you all to plant a live oak. There you go. And we are planting an oak. Okay. And it will be at the um, Keller South because how many trees? About 20, 20. 30? Yeah, 20. Sorry. Is it on? It's on. Okay. 
Yes, so we're going to be planting on April 26th at Kelair South, and we'll be having that at 10 a.m. Awesome. So come if you would like. I'm assuming a lot of people might be in the community here in the audience, so good timing. <laughs> All right, want a photo? Good. All right, so at this time, we're gonna do public comments. If, when you guys come to the stage, uh, I just need to push the gray button. It'll turn the light red. You guys have three minutes. I just need your name and address, and then the floor is yours. Uh, we are not gonna be precipitating any conversations back and forth, so you guys have the floor. I guess ask that everyone be respectful, and whoever wants to go up first, see, I got someone already up, and then I'll go right to left. <laughs> Um, good afternoon. Thank you all for your attention. I really appreciate your um, listening to what I have to say today. And um, I don't like to complain, but I just want to let you know. Name and address. Know. Name and address real quick. My name is Steve Napier. I live at 126 Country Club Drive West in Destin, Florida. I'm not here to complain. I'm just here, really, I really want to thank Mr. Tory Guile, one of the um, councilmen. He came over to my house and addressed a problem which I have brought to the city engineering department's attention for more than 15 months for more than 15 months not one thing was done to resolve my problem or even make me think they cared about it tory showed up and the next day something was happening to address the flooding problem i've got multiple movies videos pictures where the water is coming across the crown of the road flooding my house it's cracked my foundation and cracking a wall in my house because of this flooding that is continued to occur. I'll be glad to share these pictures with you. I'd like to invite each and every one of you over to my house for a cup, cup of coffee and let me show you what's been going on. They have started the process of trying to address this issue after Tory showed up. They were there the next day. But for 15 months, I've been sending emails, phone calls, and doing everything I could do to get this addressed without making it be a public issue and the engineering department just made me feel like they didn't care at all about it. I wanted y'all to be aware of that. And um, how I got here, to be honest with you, is I sent an email on the 8th, no, excuse me, the 6th of February asking for an update. And by the, about the 20th of, of March, whenever I still hadn't gotten an update, I decided I wanted to call down here. Whenever I called, the lady that answered the phone was really nice, and she told me, she said, well, maybe you need to start emailing the city council. And that's how I got the email address to get this to the city council. And now that I know how this thing works, I'm going to be here. <laughs> and I'm telling you this, my dad didn't escape from being a prisoner of war by giving up, and I'm not giving up. Appreciate your attention. Thank All you, right. sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for being here. All right, so I'm going to shift it over to stage left, my right. If anyone from the public wants to speak tonight, I'm going to go from my right side here. So anyone going around? Yes, ma'am. My name's Debbie Hughes. I live at 875 Kellair Drive. I expected more people here tonight to talk about this topic, but it's the house on Main Street being built. 10 bedroom house with a one bedroom bath, if that's accurate, which is going all over Facebook. Um, it's not what our neighborhood needs. It's not what Destin needs. That area is not meant for multi housing, which is what I assume that's going to be with 10 bedrooms. And that's really all I have to say about that. I hope you all keep that in mind, keep us in mind. I know a lot of you here, but it's important to us to not have that happen near our houses, take our property values down, who knows what else. Thank you. All right, thank you for being here. All right, anyone middle, swinging around? Yes, Larry, come on. Hi, I'm Larry Kalsert, 206 Beach Drive here in Destin. Um, I have a yacht charter company here in town and um, there, is, there has become, I've been asked to speak on behalf of several of us, um, but there is an issue regarding this overall blanket um, uh, 
what are they calling it? Um, um, yeah, it's a livery, the livery program, and how it's affecting some of us. And uh, there needs to be a lot of clarification because we're getting uh, we're getting leadership or, or advice and counsel from one person that says to do one thing, then we do that, and then that is rejected. So we have to start all over again and try to find out. This needs to be refined. We need to know exactly how this is going to work and how it's going to affect us because we're trying to operate within the rules and guidelines, regulations of the city, always have. Uh, I started in 2021, and now things have, uh, have changed in the middle of the game. The, the rules are starting to become different. Um, we need some definition and clarification. So I just wanted to raise that with the council. And I'd like to have an opportunity to meet with staff to boil this down and find out what really is needed and how we need to go about being compliant with the city. So whatever that takes, I'd like, I'd appreciate that happening. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Fire medal? Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Dr. Emily J. Stevens, 3796 in Blue Lane, Destin, Florida. Mayor Wagner, City Council members, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to address this gathering. The subject I address is property at number 414 Main Street, parcel 00253092008H0140, Kellar Gardens, second edition, lot 14, block H. Plat Book 5, page 90, Public Records of Okaloosa County, currently owned by Exotic Rentals, Inc. Canute Thomas, 16627 Deer Path Lane, Wellington, Florida. Purchased 321 of 2022. This property has been issued permits for a 10 bedroom, 10 bathroom, additional laundry room, addition at $250,000. Plumbing permit PL. MR0182131 2024, building permit BLDR0133892023, building contractor Gregory Whitfield, Whitbuilt Construction. City of Destin, compass purpose of residence, owner occupied. I believe that this pr proposed addition violates municipal code and zoning for the City of Destin. I refer to the City of Destin zoning fact sheet. Low density residential village, LDRV, excerpt from LDC 7.12.06.Q and policy 31.5.9, ensure compliance of new development with adjacent and surrounding residential uses. In viewing the city of Destin planning and zoning maps, it is evident that this proposed addition, 10 bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, additional laundry room is in violation. This will not be owner occupied. Parking for this addition also violates land development code section 3.00.01. The property and addition does not meet the city of Destin short term rental registration guide. The property and addition does not meet the state of Florida live live local act of 2023. I urge you to remand aforementioned building permits on the basis of current code. There is no single family home in the Calair Gardens, second edition, or surrounding neighborhoods that have 12 bedrooms and 12 bathrooms and two laundry rooms. This exceeds the boundary of logical thought for a single family home. This development will negatively impact housing, security, safety, and environmental concerns for residents. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. All right, all right. Not a show. Anyone else in the back middle? All right, yes, sir. I have the documentation for all of you. This is already turned on, I assume. Uh, Ted Love, 3845 Indian Trail. I recognize you people from a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, Ditto for everything she said and double ditto for everybody else. This 414 thing has got to stop. I think you guys all know the, the issues here. So let's please, let's just get this done and keep Destin a neighborhood uh, and a nice community. We don't, we're not a, a rental city overall. I mean, if you want that, go somewhere else, you know. But this, I think we know which, which direction it would actually go if it went to completion.
So I think you guys are going to do the right thing. Thanks. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. All right. Anyone else in the middle? Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Ward, 3840 Indian Trail. Um, again, 414 Maine. Um, everybody's already talked a couple of things, so I'm going to cut mine even a little shorter. Um, water runoff is a big thing. I've had issues with it at my house 10 years ago after I did mine. We finally got it fixed. Um, Steve back there had his issue with his. This is going to create a water runoff on both sides and even people back over in Spanish Moss. I think this really needs to be looked into. You're putting so many more square footage on there. Um, one other, it, this is just a little tidbit, I don't know, but the, um, if you look up exotic rentals, they say they're in 33470. Well, that's not right. It's, I mean, they are in there, but then some of the other stuff in the paperwork says 33570. If they don't know where they live, maybe that's part of the problem. You know, um, and I just wonder what else has been overlooked in this project other than the 10, 10 bedroom, two bath laundry room extension or expansion, excuse me. Just hope you all do what's right for our, our community. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else middle back? All right. Seeing none going over here. Yep. Got you after. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Joe Young. I live at 845 North Lakeside Drive, and I've been building in Destin for, since 1982, and this 414 does not qualify as a residential single-family construction. There's several other things that it violates. It doesn't fit the, De the Destin Comprehensive Plan, it doesn't maintain and enhance neighborhood quality, it doesn't conserve neighborhood, it doesn't ensure compatibility, and it's an encroachment on the residential character. It doesn't uh, follow the conservation quality of life. The vehicles are not parked correctly. The vehicles can be seen from the right of way. There's three different owners listed in the legal documentation with the city. That is a real flag. It also qualifies as a house of nuisance under Florida statute as a, a place of controlled substance being used. This thing, how it got to where it is doesn't really matter. The problem is it doesn't need to go forward. And if anybody has any questions for me, please ask, but I've done a lot of research on this and it's no way, shape or form a single family residence. Not being used now is a single family residence. It's, be, <clears throat> it's being used as a transient worker hotel. And all you have to do is go by there at seven o'clock in the morning and it's more than apparent that this is not a single family use. And if you add 10 more bedrooms to that, my God, what, what is that gonna look like? I mean, that's just gonna be a ghetto. No way around it. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Kelly Gates, 544 Cyber Avenue. I have a couple of things. Um, the cemetery parking, that's not working. It's practically unenforceable. We need to create a four-way stop at Zerby and Cybert. People are coming off the bridge, flying down in Cybert. It's very congested in that area with people walking. <clears throat> there needs to be some code training, I think, on the land development code. Um, similar to if you get hired at a restaurant, you get tested on the menu. Um, let's not be naive. The 414 Main Street is for J1 employees and there will be more than two heads in each bedroom. I think the permit should be revoked, and I think that a portion of that zoning district should be carved out to not allow more than five bedrooms and no more than two stories. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? <laughs> Duke it out. <laughs>
Carrie Harbarger, Spring Lane. Hey, I wanted to bring back a time several years ago when we redid the um, comp plan. If everybody remembers, we literally carved that part of Destin out for residents. Remember, we wanted to say life happens here. We wanted an area where we could raise our kids and not worry about transient living. And that was brought up and negotiated through the comp plan. So I really would like to reiterate that, you know, we have rentals and the short-term rentals out on the island and we have Crystal Beach, but we all decided that where the school was and all the churches right there, Destin proper, as we call it, would be carved out for us and the residents. And I just wanted to reiterate, thank you. Thank you. All right. Nope, nope. <laughs> I'm on. Uh, Taylor Waterfield, uh, 146 Calhoun Avenue. I don't think I need to reiterate the Main Street thing. I think we're all kind of in accordance there. Um, I just, as someone who pulled their first permit for the city of Destin this year, that was absolutely an atrocity. Every time I came up here, it was, it, the whole process was miserable. Trying to build a shed in my own backyard and something like this gets through. I just question how did it get through and why did it get through? Um, that's all I got. All right, appreciate you. All right, anyone else? You wanna go? No, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> just hit that button. Hit that button real quick, uh, the gray button. There you go. Name and address first. Good please. evening, ladies and gentlemen, council members, and Mayor Wagner. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. My name is Lee Parker, and I'm a resident of the Air subdivision. And of course, I want to speak about 414 Main Street. There is quite a long list of Destin municipal ordinances, codes, and even Florida state statutes that are potentially being violated by this project. I do not have time to address them all. Instead, I will concentrate on what I see to be the key issues, land use, planning, and zoning. I contend the project is intended to rent bedrooms and does not meet the land use zoning requirements of the property. I was informed by an email from Dr. Tamara Long that the, that the permit was pulled because it was owner occupied. I must assume by this that the city believes it meets the definition in section 13-121 of Destin City Code of Ordinances. It seems the key points revolve around the bedrooms, the status of the property as owner-occupied, and the zoning of the property. First, is it owner-occupied? The address recorded on Canute Thomas corporate filing as Exotic Rentals, Inc. is not at 414 Main Street, Dustin, Florida, but at 16627 Deer Path Lane in Wellington, Florida a property which I will point out is worth, is worth over a million dollars. Mr. Thomas does indeed intend to, if Mr. Thomas does indeed intend to reside at 414 Main Street, it would be as a tenant of the company. That's normal legal description. The definition, the company is the actual owner. However, the definition, definition used in that section also limits the owner to two bedrooms as rental purposes for rental occupancy to a single individual. 10 bedrooms are substantially in excess of that amount. So is it a hotel, a motel, a bed and breakfast, or other transient accommodation? It seems rather hard to claim otherwise. Exotic Rentals is a rental company. When they purchased the property and pulled the permit, their business permit listed them as hotels, motels, and long-term rentals a description which has since changed. The LDR-V zoning on which the property is located specifically prohibits such uses of the property. Whether it is owner-occupied or not is irrelevant. Finally, this project does not conform to the existing and adjacent and nearby residents in any way. Again, a violation of Destin city codes. This project was improperly permitted and the permit should be rescinded immediately. Thank you again for your time.
Before you leave, name and address, please. I'm sorry? Name and address. Your name and address. 3796 M. Lou Lane. And your name, just for the record. Pardon me? Your name. Lee. Lee, Lee? Parker. All right, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wagner. All right. <laughs> no more cutting. <laughs> Brian Otto, 3826 Indian Trail. There's a red Jeep. Red Jeep Wrangler with a lights on in the parking lot. You might want to go check yourself. There you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. Giles, how's the neck? Appreciate it. Showing up today. Did you have neck surgery? Yes? No? I, I hope you're okay with your neck surgery, right? Oh, okay. Never mind. All right, a couple things here real quick. Um, Joe's Bayou Dock. I listened to the last meeting. Only thing I ask, don't keep it closed as long as possible. Like, I know it has to probably be closed to fix it, right? Like, I get it. But, like, no washdown station, no nothing, get it open, right? Like, whatever it takes to keep it open and running for your citizens of Destin, there's a huge value there to us that use it on a daily basis as a resident. Um, honestly, I only had one question about 414. I've been listening and I'm gonna to continue to listen. But I, the one thing that keeps coming to my mind is if we had an LDC like we've been talking about for two to three years, would we not be here today? That's just my only question. Thank you. Right on. All right, appreciate that. Thank you. All right, anyone else from the list? Thank you for asking about. I appreciate it. All right, seeing none, I'm gonna close public comments at this time. Yep, all right. And we'll start off with the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? Mayor, Mayor if I may, before we proceed. Please. Since we have so many people here tonight that are interested in the Main Street property, could you have the city attorney give us a brief update about what the status is of that? I'd be happy to. Um, I, I think I've spoken with most of the council about this at this point, but um, the permit was initially issued, um, and then when it became um, clear to the city that there was some additional information on what was going to be um, occurring at the property. The city did issue a stop work order, so the construction has been halted and they do not have any authority to proceed um, at this time. And um, other than that, I would be happy to answer any additional questions that you might have. All right, thank you so much. All right, so I'll move along to the consent agenda. Does anyone have a Motion. 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 Do I hear a second? Second. So, motion is second. Call on the vote. For the consent. A three. All right. Eyes have it. So moved. Moving right along. Miss City Manager. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council Members, and uh, citizens of Destin. I'm sitting in this week for Louis Zunguzi while he's um, enjoying a well-deserved trip to the UK. Uh, he'll be back next Monday. Uh, so first on the city manager's report, uh, we have a request from the fire district to use a small portion of Clement Taylor Park and the overflow parking at Joe's Bayou to stage materials for the dock that they're building um, at their site that's over by uh, Clement Taylor Park. Um, we have the, do we have, trying to see, uh, yes we do, we have Mike Buckingham here for, uh, representing the fire district. Um, if we have any questions from council about the use, um, there may be some comments from staff or from council members as well to be shared. Do you have anything off the bat or just answers? I, I get it. All right, jump in. Um, tonight is Commissioner Buckingham. I'm with the fire district and we're here to um, request and ask the city if they'd work with us a little bit on what we feel is um, something pretty special. As of what we know, we are the only um, full um, medical marina uh, slash dock in the Panhandle. Um, we are going to provide uh, slips for not only the, the fire boats, but the Okaloosa Sheriff's Department um, and FWC. Um, and also, um, we are, we've been asked by um, city manager and code enforcement to see if we would have a slip for code enforcement for the city. Um, of course we do. So we're working out the uh, <clears throat> the language um, to allow um, the city to have code enforcement there also. Um, 
there might be a small little issue with some small parking on that, but I've been told that that would not be an issue since the city uh, is going to have a slip and they have the park next door. They got plenty of parking next door for themselves, so we shouldn't have a problem with that. Um, but what we are asking for, I sent an email to the city manager and pictures. What we're asking for is a sm I mean, very small piece up in the corner at, um, at Joe's Bayou at the old concrete plant. Um, but also a very small piece up at Clement Taylor Park right next to where we're building the park, I mean, where we're building the dock, um, so we could store a little material there also. Didn't feel it would be an issue, but I was asked to come out here and, and ask you all this evening if it was possible. And if there's any questions, I'm going to have to, to answer. Like but we, we are, we're blessed, guys. Um, you know, we, we, we survived all state agencies um, with this dock. Um, they all approved it, and, you know, we got approval from the city, obvious. So we, we've gone through... A, a pretty pretty tough cycle to get this dock done because it's a big dock but it is going to be like i said destin's first emergency response center so we're, we're proud of it and that's what it's going to that's what we're going to call it all right thank appreciate you. you being here all right up first uh, councilman stevens uh do we need to make a motion on this if so um i, I want to make a motion to where we can uh, approve you guys to use uh um, the properties to get your docks built as long as we give a stipulation there that's done before memorial day or all this stuff's moved before memorial day I promise you, John, we're going to do everything possible because it's supposed to be done by the end of May. But whatever we got to do, you know me, I'll make sure it's cleaned up and put upright. All right, I have a motion with stipulation. Do I have a second? Second. Motion a second. I'm continuing discussion. John, do you have anything else to add? All right, moving on. Uh, Councilman Schmidt. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Mike, for Commissioner, for being here. Do we have those pictures? Because they're not in our packet. They were sent to Lewis, so he's got them. But. There, to, is it possible Kevin, that we could see on the map what you're wanting to do this? If you got the map, yes. I don't have it with me. Yeah. You haven't got a copy of the map? Andy's here. pulling a map up for okay. you. Um, uh, yeah, not a problem. It's a very small piece what, up in What's the reason why it can't be done on the property that's being built? Like, why is there need? Why is this needed? I'm curious. Well, our facility, our facility is completely built out. You know, okay. it's kind of hard to bring. I mean, could it be done? Yeah. Um, is it feasible? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, and why you know, both locations? Why both locations? Because what we'd like to do is bring all the pilings over at the Joe's Bayou and, and launch them and load them there because for some reason, which that's a whole other uh, uh, thing I would like to bring up in front of this council in the future is not being able to bring material to the boat ramp. It's kind of ridiculous, but since we can't, we need some place to unload it and, and store it. So that's what we're doing. So it gets unloaded there. Mm -hmm. And then how does and it then get we will to... we'll load it onto the water from there and then what's happening well i at... say we the, the the contractor and what's happening at calhoun park what's that needed for not calhoun park the uh, clement taylor, clement -Taylor park sorry. it's right Thank next you. door we're going to we're asking to store some material on the far uh back corner over by where our property is adjacent to our property so it's easy to hand the material back on our fourth over now isn't that the same back corner that's the only corner that, that, that you're able to access the water that's the back corner that you can access the water, right? That's the only back corner. Where's the beach? There's a seawall that I think federal government gave us money or something to do down there. Huh? Right, yeah. If you can see right in the middle of that picture, you see that? Yes, that's the new uh, garage that houses the fire trucks. Okay, so if you go straight towards the water, okay, or I don't see, right there, right about where you're, right, no, back up a little bit inside the beach, right there, right underneath that tree is where we want to store a little material so we can take it, walk it right. Isn't there. that your property right there? Uh, it's yours. It's a citizen's. Okay. So Behind that, that's, that's your firehouse, right? Yeah. Okay, there's a better picture. Now take, now take the, take, go, go up a little bit towards the water. Right. Right in that corner, just in that corner right there. No, way back, way back. Right, right there in the corner. Yes, correct, right there. Right. So that's where the beach is. Correct. That's right. Beach. So, right. I mean. But we're not going to put it on, we're not going to put it on the beach. Yeah. No, we're talking about. But it's potential safety concern where people are launching their kayaks We're going right to fence it. We're going to put fence around it. Safety fence. Right. I, 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 I want to support Destin Fire, what y'all do, safety, I love it. Um, I just have concerns about one, 
uh, being in the way at Joe's Bayou boat launch, unless you're going to guarantee it's going to be clear out of there by Memorial. Kevin, and then two, that. putting it right there with the only access that citizens have to access that water. Whether you fence it or not, it's just still a little concerning, you know, okay. because and three, we're doing something that I want to make sure that we'd be able to do something for another citizen or a partner if they came and asked us. I want to treat everybody fairly. So I just and, and I have a little concerns. I wish we had better pictures, but um, I just I don't know. I just have a little concerns. And, and, I, and I and I understand. It's your not concerns. very clear, unfortunately, for me. I understand your concerns, Kevin. But like I just told John, I personally am going to make sure that it's cleaned right. up and stayed right and fenced right. off. And, you know, I mean, well, I'll support the motion if he wants to make a, a amendment to make sure that it's taken out of there and it's not. But you have it in your access. motion right now. He's got it in his motion. That's in his motion. What was your motion? Kim, can you repeat my motion? <laughs> my fear was your response John, was you'll do everything that you can. <laughs> the motion is to use Mr. Buckingham's request if done by Memorial Day. Both parks. And it was seconded by Mr. Dustin. That's fine. My concern is your response, Mr. Buckingham, which I do believe you and trust you, but you said you're going to do everything that you can. Kevin, you just trusted it, me so for three years to build your park. I just want to make sure that sakes. Are you we're, serious? we're doing it correctly. You just trusted me for three years to build your park, did you not? And I did a good job there, did I not? Thank you for your assistance Thank you, for sir. doing that, Mr. Buckingham. For free. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All right. Councilman Bagley. Okay, so, yeah, I, I may have had the same concern just based on the response that you'll do everything you can to get it clear by Memorial Day. I believe you will. Yes. I think what, what he's saying, what, what John's saying, what we're all saying is it will be done by Memorial Day or it'll be on your property somewhere. And that, as long as we all agree with that, and I think we all agree with that, I think you're going to... Add that in your motion. Yeah, yeah. and we'll, I think everybody will be happy. Uh, I'm not sure why you wouldn't put your, what I will call close by staging materials, other than they would be close to the road, uh, close to Calhoun is, out by where the entrance to our park is so that you could drive over, pick up whatever you got to pick up, come back around. I, I, I'm a little concerned that it's going to be down there by the beach, because uh, that is the beach access for the base. but. As long as it's all going to be done and restored by Memorial Day, I'm happy. Thank you, sir. Right, Councilman King. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I was just, I had the same concerns. I think, you know, however, I think I look, I probably look at it a little bit differently. You know, if it was my neighbor that wanted to build a dock and it made their life way easier to put their, you know, if I could accommodate them and put my, put their stuff just across the fence, I mean, that's what we're doing in this town, trying to be good neighbors. So, you know, there's a lot of, we stand to benefit from this. The, the, I think the, the fire department, the, who else is using that? I mean, code, first, the, first yeah, I mean, it's just whatever we can do. I, I'm kind of the mind, whatever we can do to make it more efficient. I was going to say the same thing, you know, whatever's not used up on Memorial day, let's get it on y'all's property if possible. Sweet. All right. Councilman Dustin wrapping it up. Mike, be sure to Mike Buckingham over here. When you, when you speak, you Mike, gotta turn the button. Hey, just please make sure you use your microphone because you're not picking up without on the recorder. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to observe that the fire department is not just a citizen asking. They're a fellow government entity. They provide the fire protection and the medical services. And if they didn't, we would be compelled to do so ourselves. So to help them is helping ourselves. And, we, and as far as the pylons being launched from the ramp, I don't know if any of you ever try to take big, heavy pylons across a seawall or a beach. They can tear things up. So to go through the ramp and be towed around is the way it needs to be done. So I'll, I'll support it, especially <laughs> since I have confidence that they'll get it out of there by Memorial Day. They, they have to. Mr. Destin, thank you for bringing that up because we, the Destin Fire District, brought this to the city here about 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, and we asked you all to take the fire department over, and you all didn't want it. We would love for you guys to take it over. We would, <laughs> we would love for you guys to take it over, and we're, and we're sincere. We're very sincere. We, we, we would give it to you all in a heartbeat to run it. But, you know, we're, we're here to, 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 as far as safety, you know, we're right next door, so we're, we're going to do everything we can to make it right. 
Hey, Mike, real quick, where where did you say y'all are gonna um, where did you say y'all are gonna store the stuff at Joe's Bayou? I can show you a map if you want to. I got it. I don't have that red thing. <laughs> At Joe's body. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys. <laughs> Telling secrets up here. I'm so I'm so used to Kim. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry, Kim. I know better. Okay, Johnny. So at, Johnny, you're if you're looking the, at the concrete I'm not plant, concerned about it. I just right, want to make sure we, we, everybody plant, on the public record knows where right. this stuff's going to be. The far everybody. left corner. You're not even going to know we're up there. Okay. We're going to be in the far left corner. We're yeah, because there's we plenty of ground up there spaces. that's not being used. Okay. So there's there's plenty, southwest plenty of yes. ground. Southwest. Yes, sir. Southwest. southwest corner. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, Andy, can you pull up Joe's Bayou so we can point it out? I'm sorry, sir. Oh, I was going to see if Andy can pull up Joe's Bayou on the map. So yeah, that'd be fine. Andy, you know the city left and right yet? <laughs> Go back over to Joe's. Joe's Bayou. He's almost there. Oh, there you go. So you're saying southeast. A little bit. Okay. There you go. Right there. You see the see the paved road right there that I built? I did that for y'all. Okay. That we had some leftover material we did. Okay. I just wanted Kevin to know that. But if you go to the end of that road right there, go up to the end of that road right there. No, no. Back up, back on the concrete plant. No, no. On the concrete plant. Property. Right, oh, I I'm sorry. I didn't know he was doing it. I'm sorry. Yeah, right there. See where, see where Mike's got that? Right up in that area. Only. Just in that small little area up there. That's okay. it. Okay. Says, all right. I don't see any other. So we're going to call the vote. All right. There you go, Mike. What a salesman. I just have it. <laughs> Commissioner Buckingham, just, just one comment. Could you please coordinate with Lisa Firth just so that the Parks and, direct, uh, Parks and Rec people can you know, work with you to cordon off with their stuff? Yes, ma'am. Good. Thank you. Yes. All right. All right, Ms. Strickland, back to you. All right. So uh, the next item on the city manager's report, uh, we have a request from the uh, Faith Coast Church, which is right next door to our uh, Buck Destin Park. Uh, for a chem temporary change of use, um, they'd like to put on a festival beginning um, April 4th through April 14th uh, for 11 days. And um, we have the, the report in front of you. We have their request. Uh, staff is recommending that we shorten the hours on the weekday nights because those are school nights uh, to keep the noise down for the, the children in the area. Um, with that, I think I should let, um, let yeah. Um, Steve, will you will you uh, describe the item for us? Absolutely. Um, as uh, uh, Crystal stated, they are requesting for a festival at uh, uh, Faith Coast Campus off of Legion Drive. Um, it is for 10 days, um, and our recommendation based on um, the activity is to reduce the requested hours that they had um, down to... It, so weekdays from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. with the music shut off at 7 p.m. Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. with music shut off at 9. And Sundays, uh, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. with music shut off at 9 as well. Um, we did receive, oh, also, um, the uh, condition number five in the staff report, that can be scratched um, as a, that's kind of a duplicate of uh, the original request for those hours. Um, and it needs to be replaced with a uh, condition that all state permits and inspections are completed and passed per state statutes, uh, chapter 616. Um, so that's the change to the staff report there. We did receive an email from a citizen, uh, a Mr. Seattle Alderman. Um, he provided a few further recommendations uh, for this. Um, first recommended uh, recommendation is uh, to not allow the festival to go on for 10 days. Um, they recommend to limit this uh, from Thursday to Sunday. Secondly, um, to, uh, for, on school nights, uh, for the music to be shut off no later than 7 p.m. Um, and then third, there was concern about the high 
traffic of uh, pedestrians as well as the shuttle uh, that they're proposing from the off-site churches, uh, off-site church parking lots uh, in the packet. And then, so for final thoughts on that, um, the requested hours uh, per this uh, email was uh, Thursday, 4424 from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., music shut off at 7 p.m., and off-duty police officers. Uh, Friday, 4, 5, 24, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., music shut off at 7. Um, I'm sorry, mu music turned down at 7 and shut off at 9 um, with off-duty officers as well. And then Saturday, 4, 6, 24, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., with music and amplifiers turned down at 7 p.m. and shut off at 9 p.m. with off-duty police officers. And then Sunday, uh, 4, 7, 24, from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., Music and amplifiers shut off at 7 p.m. and off-duty officers as well. Um, so that's the that's the email in a nutshell, and we'll provide that into the the record uh, for this item. Um, with that, if there are any questions of staff, the applicant is also here. Um, if there are any questions for them, is there anything, or would you like to speak on the matter? Yeah, the applicant. Yep. Hey, good to see you back. Same as the rest, just hit that gray button. Yeah, so uh, thank you for your time. And uh, our intention is to create a fun, family-friendly event for the, um, we're Faith Coast Academy as well as Faith Coast Church. We, I'm proud to say, are Destin's only private uh, school. And so we'd like to create an event where our students and parents and families and friends can come out and obviously welcome the community as well. Uh, so our intention is to be a blessing to the community, not create any uh, trauma or issues for the community. And um, we're excited about it. We think it'd be a great thing uh, for the families to come out and have fun. Uh, I know somebody mentioned something about the length. Uh, one of the residents, I guess, that wrote in mentioned something about the length. And uh, the length, we're just taking cues from people who've done this before. Um, because there's not a lot of advertising for it. It's really like word of mouth and people seeing it. So the length is so that people have time to find out about it and decide, are we gonna go, let's get there before it's over. So uh, we expect it to ramp up toward the end um, of the time frame. So um, that's it, but I can answer any questions and have the event manager here as well. All right, uh, Councilman Destin. Thank you, Mayor. Do you understand the restrictions and the parameters that the staff is proposing to put on your festival and you can still do it without having too much problem? Yes, sir, we can. Thanks. Councilman Bagby? I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve with the stipulations stated by the staff. Okay. The motion is second. Uh, any further? All right, Councilman Schmidt. Thank you. It's nice to see you again, sir. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Uh, I do have a few questions. I spoke to a lot of people in the neighborhood as well, so some of them couldn't come, so I wanted to get their questions asked. Um, you mentioned about doing a blessing for the community. I appreciate that, but what's the overall purpose of the event? Um, obviously, uh, one of the big motivations for us is visibility. Um, we are getting ready to move into a new school year. And so we just want a lot of the families to know that we're there. A lot of our parents find out about us and have found out about us through word of mouth. And they are excited when they find out about us. And they're like, I wish I'd have known you were here. Well, we're new. We just started. So um, one of the things is just to put us on the map and in, uh, in front of a lot of the families. And then uh, I heard mention of security. Was that in the... Steve's, was that your one of your conditions? No, that was the recommendation from the recommendation. resident. What's your plan for security during the day, during the night? Um, we have volunteers uh, that are a part of our ministry that are available to assist us with just keeping eyes on. And then obviously any recommendations that uh, we need to comply with with off-duty officers, right. uh, we want to have them there for that as well. So okay. is that... Answering the question, right. is that the purpose so of it? there's currently no contract with the sheriff's department to provide. Well, we have uh, an agreement in place with them because they come on Sundays and are on our campus on Sundays for services on occasion. Um, it's kind of on an as-needed basis. We'll call them out and they come. So that is in place, but uh, not for this event yet. We're waiting until um, it's, it's an okay gotcha. from you. I'm, I'm seeing Captain Fulgham leaning over. Do you have anything, sir? Yeah. Uh, 
I understand this event's going to be 11 days from now. No, sir. Two days, I think. Two days? Starts on the four, April 4th. Okay. Uh, Please it's, give us your input. Yeah, it, you're probably going to have a difficult time getting off-duty deputies scheduled in two days. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but um, this time of year, the off-duty deputy, um, the tax on off-duty deputies is with spring break going on. They're working in a lot of places. Um, you'll definitely have to pay an increased fee for a short notice detail, but uh, I, I'm not sure that you're going to be able to get it in two days. I, I'm not willing to say that you're not going to be able to, but sure. it's going to be a it'll be a heavy lift to get get coverage in two days. I appreciate that. So, who is PL Media? Is that what it's called? I can't remember. I wrote yeah. that down wrong. The PL event Media. manager is here with me. Oh man, so jolly. That's him. Gotcha. So are they like? They just uh, do we're not in the festivals. Yeah, the exactly. We're not in the business doing it. He's been doing it for years and years. So we're following his lead and taking his recommendations from his years of experience in running these gotcha. types of events. Yeah. And then there's no parking at all on site. Um, all, all the parking is going to be at Methodist Church and Corpus Christi. Uh, I don't know if that's completely accurate. The, the ADA parking will be provided on site, but everything else will be provided at the um, two other campuses. Was that God? I didn't see who that was. <laughs> Wait, so... He's got long hair. <laughs> oh, Steve. Okay. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> so when you look at the map of your, um, your application, it has a green barrier around part of the map. What's that green barrier? Would that be a fence? Oh, man, so. <laughs> hey, good, good day, uh, Councilman sure. and Mayor. Uh, my name is Amanso Jolly. Um, so that green line is just to tell the distance between the fence line and where we'll start to uh, place the rights, right? So that's that 25 feet away from the fence line. So the ADA parking is going to be where? Do you know, Steve? Uh, yes, on the uh, west side of the main building. Also, the, the, just to provide a little bit more clarity, the green area identifies the activity area, um, and the parking ratio um, is based off of either number of seating or gross activity area um, at a um, one per four per seating uh, and or one per 150 uh, for the gross activity area. And so they gave us that um, square footage of the activity area to get us that parking ratio. Okay. And w I know we have Buck Destin Park right there. What are the hours of Buck Destin Park? Jump in, Lisa. Uh, yeah, sunrise, sunset, and then um, any of the rentals at in the house, um, we do require them to be out by 9 p.m. So do you know, I'm not sure, Lisa, maybe you, this will be for you, but do we have anything thought about or in place to not have parking inside Buck Destin's parking lot for people to come to this event? We will definitely have to secure it, and I did kind of mention the code. I might need to have them help me a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, we'll have to, like we do at the uh, community center when we have an event, we'll have to monitor it because... We sure. use Buck Destin every day and pretty much every night. Okay. And then the shuttle that's being used, what kind of shuttle is being used between the churches and your event? Uh, the low-speed vehicles. Okay. And then so whenever the stipulation says that it has to be able to pull in and out without in the right-of-way, blocking the right-of-way, is that what you said? Yeah, correct. Um, currently, it's not allowed uh, for non-residential uses to back into the right-of-way uh, as a means of egress. So... The requirement is to be able to pull onto the property and turn around fully so they can pull out front way. And is that something that's going to be doable, I guess, based upon the setup? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, thank you for all the entertaining all of the questions here. Thank um, you. You know, I, I've, uh, I've talked to a lot of people, I say a lot, five to six, because, you know, just, just got brought to our attention. Sure. But people that live there. Uh, they're very concerned about the, um, just the congestion and traffic of both foot walking, LSVs, down Legion, all afternoon and evening um, for 10 days. 
um, they want to have their fall festival or so. Sorry, not fall festival, but festival sure. food and food and festivals. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. um, but they just don't think that it's best to be. Uh, we're talking about a 10 bedroom house earlier and no comparison, but we, we heard earlier that this doesn't fit with that area. Right. The festival that you're showing us does not fit in that area, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions. So um, I would rather propose a substitute motion to lower it to Thursday to Sunday with the same stipulations. Is that a motion? It is. All right. Do I have a second on that motion? I'll second that. All right. Anything else? I got a couple more on the dais for discussion. Since you got no, your sir. second. That's All right. it. Councilman Stevens. Yeah, um, I guess uh, I got two questions. Um, one of them is with your message board. Um, just want to make sure that that's not going to be on the sidewalk. It's going to be to where people can still walk through and all that. Is that, is that correct? Yes. Cool. Yes, sir. All right. And then um, I guess the next question would be, kind of, um, I guess for uh, uh, Fulgham in the back, um, if they were to delay the, uh, the event to, where, to Thursday to Sunday, would it be easier for them to get off-duty officers? Yeah, any, you know, obviously the further out they go from today, the easier it's going to be to find someone to cover it. Um, but again, it's, it's still going to be a very short notice detail. Okay. Because um, my worries is if we approve this uh, event without having uh, security on some of those days, um, I mean, that's a concern. So I, I, I kind of agree with Kevin on delaying it to where you could potentially get those law enforcement officers to provide security. So that's all I got. All right, Councilman Gow. Um, with an event like this, uh, I would not support shortening the time. It's going to be a word of mouth thing. So the first weekend, it's not going to be that busy. Uh, there's, in my opinion, there would be no opportunity for them to recoup whatever funds they have um, in order to, to function or, or utilize this, this event properly. Um, it's not in my opinion, the same as 414 Main Street because this is a temporary, this isn't a, a, a permanent structure. Uh, I also appreciate the fact it's a benefit to the community. Um, so I'm not gonna be supporting the shortened time. I'm gonna support the original uh, motion. Is there any fees for the festival to get in administrative, like to yes. interest fee? Okay. Yes. All right, uh, Councilman Destin. Thank you, Mayor, and I guess this question will be directed toward the staff. This is an existing church, right? There's a church on this site, and I see festivals at churches all the time. Does the city have an organ, have an ordinance that regulates when and how a church in a proper zoning area can, how, how they do festivals? Um, so the no, there isn't anything specifically in any city ordinance that requires a weekend festival. However, given the request, the length, the um, gravitude or the gravity of every everything that's involved, uh, staff felt that it was best to go through this change, temporary change of use process so that we could go through a, a full review of everything that's being done um, so that we can address all the, everything appropriately. So there's a number of days, if you have over that number of days, festivals so, in a year that we trigger this more intense review? Uh, so essentially what it boils down to is that the festivals that are generally done at other uh, uh, churches are generally for the congregants and members of that church, and they're generally held over a weekend. Um, this is open to Everyone, I mean, I, th those other festivals are generally open to everyone as well, um, but, but specifically they're kind of meant for the, the congregation. This is the, anyone from around the area um, is meant to come here um, to raise awareness of the, the, the church, the academy, all that sort of stuff. So staff felt that this would be the most appropriate route to go um, considering the, uh, the request. Well, with all due respect, it appears you're flying by the seat of your pants and you have no support in any kind of ordinance or rules and regulations. Um, and on that note, I think I will support the first motion, but we can certainly pass the second. And, and I'm afraid, you know, this worries me that we're setting some kind of a precedent, precedent here that 
we have the authority to regulate festivals at churches, which we most assuredly do not. All right, uh, Councilman King. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think for the first time in a long time, I agree with Tori. Um, oh. So. <laughs> 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 no, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I appreciate community outreach. I appreciate what you guys are doing. There's, you know, it's a seemingly new thing that y'all have coming to us. Um, you know, I would, I would support, I support the original motion. I like the conditions that we put in um, for the community. I flip side is if I lived, you know, in one of those neighborhoods, I've got a, I have a one year old. If you kept my kid up, you'd be hearing from me, you know, by way of my wife. Um, <laughs> so, so, I mean, I, I support it with the, with the conditions that we have. And, and, and I think the same thing who, who, you know, we don't, we don't have an ordinance. We don't, there's nothing, there's nothing in our code that says you can't do this. I don't, I don't see why we would tell them, why we would tell them we couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. Lastly, can you describe to us what the event's going to look like? I mean, I, we see pictures, but can you tell us what, what's going to be going on and uh, what, I mean, I know we have an idea of what to expect, but can you give us an idea of your vision on what this is going sure. to be? Shameless happen? plug. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, our hope would be that it would create, you know, some traffic issues because that would be good. People found out about it and want to come. Uh, when we started it, our goal was just to put on an event that is something that brings a lot of joy to everybody. That's why we got a guy involved with his name Jolly, like we're trying to make it. Um, in the front lawn, we're having inflatables for kids, which is very familiar on church campuses. Um, we have uh, very small carnival-type rides, um, nothing that you would see at a, a respectable fair, probably. Um, it's just something to make the kids want to come out. And then food vendors so that the families, while the kids are hungry, are having options to enjoy food from local food trucks and things like that. So um, that's the goal. I'll, if it you know, turns into traffic jams and things like that, then um, that would be uh, a negative on some level, but we'd be like, wow, that's just, this is more popular than we thought. Um, but we'd love for it to um, just be something that has positive feedback, even from residents on Legion, because uh, that's, they're in our backyard. Those are our neighbors. <laughs> that's great. Thank, thank you, and sorry, uh, sorry having to deal with this, but we, uh, I'm excited to see how it looks. Right. Thank you. Councilman Bagby. Thanks. I, I agree with Tori, too. Yeah, that's more <laughs> surprising than you agree with Tori. Okay. Uh, and I agree with Mr. Destin, uh, but that's not surprising to anybody. The, uh, it, we need to be tread very carefully. You know, the staff had some apprehension. They, they asked that you make some restrictions on noise times and all this other stuff. You did that. Uh, you know, we have fish fry at my church, uh, which has turned into a regional fish fry because there's not enough people going to the individual Catholic churches in the area. So we just, you know, it's here at this Catholic church one Friday and it's there another Friday. And nobody's going to regulate that. And we have a lot of people, probably more in one day than y'all will have in any one day other than Saturday or Sunday. My question for the substitute motion maker and second is Thursday through Sunday, which one? Because there's two Thursday through Sunday periods here. So are y'all talking the first Thursday through, you know, the fourth through the fifth, sixth, seventh? Or are you talking the ninth through the 14th or 10th through the 14th? Kevin? One of you. I mean, it sounds like y'all are ready to open up shop three days from now, so I mean, I don't think you want us to change it at all. I imagine you probably have contracts in place, you have bands lined up, you have all sorts of stuff. So, um, But if, if that were to pass, I guess the question is, which one would be better for y'all? Do you have a preference? Yeah. What he, I think what he's, at, is what, he's at, what he's saying is if my motion passes with four people you're gonna to have to do it thursday through sunday right which one which one which one will the true which we the fourth through the april 7th or the 10th through the 14th 
or the 11th, 11th through 14th. 11th through 14th, 11th through 14, 11 through 14 11 my bad. 14. Okay, so just to clarify, sure. Right. Okay. You agree with that down for a second? Okay, okay. so uh, I, w I won't support the substitute. I mean, I, I want you to, you know, have a chance to build your congregation. And, and I, trust me, I understand what, what the neighbors are dealing I, I have rental houses all around me. And spring break, they're all full this week because people from Atlanta and Texas and Tennessee and all these other places and the noise. They're, our quiet time's 10 o'clock. And at 10 o'clock, if they're still making noise or I can hear them, I call the security or I call the sheriff and it gets fixed. But we haven't had a problem this year. And I hope we don't have a problem this summer. But, uh, you know, people have a right to reach out to the community. Everybody in the community can go to it. I hope you have full, you know, you have a parking problem at the Catholic Church or at the other churches. But, uh, yeah, thank you for bringing some activity, kid-friendly activity, to our community. Thank you, sir. All right, Councilman Schmidt, final words? Sure, just a couple, uh, one quick question for uh, Mr. Troy. The ordinances that we do have in place, what, what's the sound ordinance for people that are listening? Or Kim or... Troy, whoever can answer that question. I don't know. I was asking Troy or Kim. Uh, I got the ones outside. Yeah, so 300 feet. The noise um, needs to be reasonable from 300 feet from the property line, right? So the issue that one of the issues that staff was concerned about for this particular application, and, and I think the reason why they wanted to take it to council is because the residential there is Street. closer than 300 feet. So there wouldn't be a way really without putting this into place to regulate the noise for the nearby residents. Right. So, but I believe, you know, after further conversations with staff that the church was happy to accommodate those revised um, scheduling so that, you know, the children that can go to bed on time and the noise will stop by seven on weeknights and then end by eight and, and so on. So I think it was resolved by the conditions, but that was the reason um, that staff was concerned. So um, who's the direct point of contact for the festival if, like, our staff needs to reach out to anybody during the event? Myself would be fine. And they have your information? Yes. Great. Spoken several times. Well, I appreciate it, and I, and I support uh, staff that brought this to our attention. Um, I, I love having a good time. People that know me know that, so um, I'm sure I'll be there with my three kids as well. Wonderful. Um, but... Um, you know, like they just said, the stage is facing a house. It's barely 300 feet away. So according to our ordinances, they could make that call and they could be complaining. And hopefully it's all going to be a family for, you know, they'll be happy and not making the call. But sure. that's what we are potentially setting ourselves up. For. I understand. The and the process will follow itself. So. And I certainly don't yeah. want to um, uh, belabor it, but right. our goal is not to no, offend any of our I neighbors. Know. I know. So Just we're going to behave. Looking well. out for all of the. I appreciate people. it. So thank yes. you very much. Thank you. All right. So with that, we're going to call uh, the roll on the substitute motion for a Thursday, Sunday, the second week of that. So I'm calling the vote. All right. Okay. All right. So that fails. So now we're back to the the first. Do you have any? All right. So we're back to the first motion of as intended with the previous agreed on. So calling the vote. All right, I have it so moved. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. If I would, I'd love to invite everybody to join us <laughs> April 4th through the 4th. So last question as a shameless plug, what's like the age range that you guys are planning this for? Um, the rides are more kid focused, so middle school, elementary. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you guys so much. Thank you. All right, Ms. Strickland. All right. <clears throat> yep. All right, team. Uh, I'm going to put on my finance director hat and come to the podium so I can see your faces. Uh, the next oh, she's making a proclamation. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no proclamations. Uh, we're going to review uh, renewal and replacement options. He wants to see all of your faces when this yeah. happens. <laughs> yeah. For everyone left in the room, this is going to be a good one.
right, Andy is bringing up the slide presentation for us. Um, the, the goal of this presentation, I just want to clarify, is I'd like to put in place a renewal and replacement resolution. So I'm going to walk us through some of the numbers. Uh, there were some concerns raised over the last six months about how is this going to affect all of the other capital improvement projects we have if we're just renewing and replacing the existing infrastructure we have. Uh, so I have some of those answers here. We're looking at the, uh, the five-year period from 2025 to 2029. Uh, so we're going to just take a quick glance through all of the capital projects we have going. I'd like to show how much of non-general fund money is going to accomplish all of those major programs. And here we are. It's, it's opening up. Looks like it's as a PDF instead of a slide PowerPoint, but that's okay. We can work with this, right, Andy? Um, so we're going to look at the, uh, the top major capital improvement projects we have, just uh, quickly glance through those, uh, and then we're going to see the effect on our general fund balance if we do those and the uh, catch-up on renewal and replacement. Uh, so we have, especially in uh, public works, we have a lot of roadways that we really should have repaved uh, more than 25 years ago. Um, Approximately 70% of our roadways are uh, past due for touching. If we let them go too long, sometimes the degradation goes so bad that it can be seven times more costly to uh, address these. So, ah, here we go. Look at that. The presentation is up. Uh, so here's the agenda. Uh, background effect on top uh, capital improvement projects. The effect on the general fund balance. We're going to see where the gap is. Options to fund that gap. And then we're going to look at the two renewal and replacement plans. One is to catch up with all of our deferred renewals and replacements within five years. The other one is to catch up on everything that's been deferred over seven years. So here are the top priority projects on this first list. Uh, these are items that where we already have commitments in place. We have interlocal agreements in place and or we have um, parts of these projects already on order, encumbered with purchase orders. Um, I just want to point out, let's see if I can get the laser to work. Nope, new TVs, old laser. Uh, the first column is the, the estimated total cost. So our top priority projects we're estimating will be about $34 million. Um, the second column shows non-general fund sources that we have under contract to help pay for all of these projects. And you can see we've got nearly $26 million of non-general fund money going to accomplish these projects. Um, anything that's not covered by those non-general fund sources falls into the next column called the shortfall. So I'm going to assume that the general fund has to cover it unless we can raise other sources. So we have some grant applications out in the world right now. And uh, we're talking to the county, we're talking to the state, uh, so we're trying to, to fill that gap. But for now, our general fund can handle this. Um, on the next slide, we have a few more. Oh, there, we skipped over that very quickly. We have some highly desired projects that we have in the works. Uh, the, the linear trail that's going to go um, like back by uh, Jewel Melvin Park is on there. Non-general funds resources we have applied so far is $8 million. Um, the pedestrian pathway under the bridge, uh, we're talking with a lot of different uh, state agencies and uh, local counterparts about that one. Uh, undergrounding phase two, I feel confident that the electric franchise fee is going to cover that second phase entirely. Um, then we have, uh, we're, we allocate some half penny money to our uh, public Safety and uh, Pedestrian Safety Committee uh, under TRSAF. And then we have a bunch of other uh, planned projects, which I've summarized here. Uh, all in all, if we keep going forward, let's see, and then we get up to the Renewal and Replacement Program. I threw in the five-year numbers. Uh, over $9 million of the Renewal and Replacement Program is also covered by non-general uh, fund sources, primarily a gas tax number one. And this is what I expect to bring in. Uh, we've got the gas tax number one, and I'm proposing that we reallocate some of the Okaloosa half-penny infrastructure surtax 
money towards uh, renewing and replacing our roadways in particular. Uh, so here is just a, a quick look of the, um, the general fund. For the next five years, I anticipate that the general fund revenues will be over $111 million. Um, that's coming from all the different sources. Uh, Ad valorem is one of the smallest of all of those sources, just to remind people. General fund operating expenses will be about $92 million. Um, then the next level, we have some transfers in and out. The town center CRA is paying back the general fund um, and, and doing very well. Uh, so we'll allow that to continue, repaying for money they borrowed in past years. The building fund, uh, the shortfall needs to be addressed. We shouldn't have to subsidize the building fund. Uh, taxpayers shouldn't have to subsidize the building fund. Uh, the building permit fees really should be covering the cost of running that department. Um, then we have some transfers out for capital projects planned and then transfers out for other things. Mostly it's uh, debt. Uh, the bottom line here is that uh, we have about $25 million dollars um, well, $26 million after all is said and done that we can apply towards renewal and replacement and other capital pro improvement projects. So now that we know how much money we have, um, when I summarize all those previous slides, you see that we have $98 million worth of projects. Uh, 67 million of non-general fund is going to cover it. That leaves 31 million dollars that right now, I need the general fund to fill that gap. Again, unless I can bring in other grant revenues and things to cover it. So the, the, the shortfall is only five million dollars. So we're gonna, be, we're gonna be able to cover that. Um, this slide, I have some recommendations on uh, some of the fees, not, not ad valorem taxes, but just fees that we could look at to fund that gap. Uh, for example, if we make our building fund self-sufficient by increasing the, the building permit fees, uh, that could generate about $2 million over the five-year period. Uh, another one is we're looking at um, our short-term rental condos. Condos do not register with a short-term rental fee like the single families do they have a big impact on public safety in particular. Um, not to mention there's also an impact on our, on our other infrastructure, but public safety is the biggest one. Uh, the the short-term condos have a huge impact on the people that the lifeguards have to manage, and that um, that's the reason that we have to have the secondary contract with the, the sheriff's office um, for augmented law enforcement in our town. Um, we have the uh, mobility plan that's gonna be coming back. It's been through a lot of committees. It's been out for a lot of, uh, and some workshops, and it went out for another um, bite at the apple to, to, to generate some public input. Uh, so that's gonna be coming back to council within the next month. If we can uh, adopt that mobility plan, that will set the basis for the impact fees for uh, bike lanes and uh, pedestrian, multimodal, all, all kinds of uh, ways to get around town. That will be very helpful. Uh, we're also looking at our recreation fees, including potentially um, adding a resident uh, boat ramp pass, just an annual, a little annual fee to help us cover the cost of staffing the, the site and maintaining, the, uh, maintaining all the work that FDEP is gonna be putting in there. Uh, over the next years. We're also looking at how to use less general fund money to address issues within the harbor. We need to keep the harbor clean. We need to continue doing the water testing. We need to continue monitoring. We also need to start raising regular funds to dredge the harbor uh, in a better partnership with the county and other counterparts. So uh, we're looking at all of, uh, all of those items as well. So I feel pretty confident that we'll be able to bridge this gap over the next five years. And this is just a summary slide of those fees and what they could potentially bring in per year. So now we're getting to the renewal and replacement fund. Uh, you've seen some of these before. Um, we've got 48% of our infrastructure and facilities are, are seriously aged in, they're getting into the critical area. Uh, this is the roadways. Uh, only 32% of the, let's see, 30% of our roadways 
have a good remaining useful life. The other 70% are beyond uh, their normal useful life and they need updated. Um, this is just a short summary of the, this shows the uh, effect of inflation. If we, if we do everything under the five-year plan, uh, it'll be about $235,000 $235, less expensive than doing it under the, the seven-year plan because you're adding in the inflationary factor, most particularly upon asphalt. Um, and roadways is the, the main category that we stretched back and forth to make sure we're meeting. Most of the other categories we've caught up upon, for example, the uh, HVAC units on most of our buildings, we were forced to change them out over this last year because they just simply went out. So under emergency, under emergencies, we just had to replace them. So a lot of things are um, accidentally caught up that way. It's just uh, the roadways and some park facilities that are becoming really critical right now. Um, this shows the difference between the top is a five-year plan and below is uh, the seven-year plan. This shows the cash flows uh, that we're proposing to be able to keep a positive balance in the renewal and replacement fund to fund all of the, the projects that we foresee being needed uh, through 2029. So the five-year plan. And the difference really isn't very much. Um, so I'm going to be proposing the, you know, my recommendation would be to go with the five-year catch-up plan. Um, but we'll see what you guys have to say after this. Um, this so just a reminder, gas tax number one, 100% of that goes right into the renewal and replacement program. It supplies us about 550000 a year, but our actual need is about $1.5 million per year to maintain what, or to keep renewed what we need to renew. Uh, most of the roadways surfaces will last 15 to 20 years, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, and that's where the 1.5 million comes in at the current cost of asphalt divided by the number of square feet of roadways that we have. Um, so one of the main things I'm proposing is that we reallocate the Okaloosa half penny surtax. And I really wish the laser was working. Well, it works, oh, look at that, it works uh, up here. So I'm proposing that we take some of this 55% allocation that we've allocated to undergrounding, so we ha we're going to put $9 million there. The electric franchise fee is more than adequately covering that amount, so I'd like to take $6 million of that and pull it down over here to public works and safety, because they, they, um, they're getting a small piece, so I'd like to uh, move in that direction. So that's a simple motion that council would make. It's not in resolution format. Um, for the renewal and replacement resolution, there's the draft resolution. It's uh, a couple pages down in your packet. Uh, some of the items that I need from council uh, will include setting a minimum balance. Um, so I just proposed in this slide, maybe our minimum fund balance is a million a year. And I'd like to get there by 20, 2031. Uh, and also, we should have a maximum fund balance as well. Because if we're at the maximum, you know, then we should be diverting funds to do other capital improvement projects or potentially lower taxes or anything else that we could be doing. But we shouldn't be asking, you know, uh, putting funds away for something that's, if it's not required. So minimum and a maximum. Uh, the maximum I was considering 5% of the net assets because that happens to be about equal to our annual depreciation per year. So it was... Um, just a, a number that made sense to me. When I was in the, the water and wastewater field, um, the most common covenant we would have with our, our uh, bondholders was 5% of the previous year's revenues, um, which pretty, you know, tended to cover things pretty well. And our, our bondholders like that a lot. They like to know that we're maintaining our infrastructure, especially if we're asking them for money to build anything. Uh, so the next steps, uh, in April, uh, I'd like to adopt this renewal and replacement resolution. Uh, and I'd like a commitment to reallocate the half-penny infrastructure surtax uh, to take it away from undergrounding and apply it to our roadways and surface, uh, and, yes, our roadways. Um, and I would like a minimum of a three-year general fund dollar commitment 
uh, to put into the resolution. So I'll say what we'd like to put in in January of 2025, in January of 2026, and January of 2027. The reason I say January is because that is when most of the ad valorem money comes into the city so that I wouldn't have to take something out of investments, you know, just when it comes in fresh in cash, I'll divert it into the investment account for renewal and replacement instead of um, the others. Um, and in April, um, at the next meeting, we plan to bring the mobility plan back, I believe, either the April 15th meeting or the first meeting in, in May. Um, so that will be helpful. And then our code compliance director has been working on, he's been reviewing the status of all the short-term rentals and the impact that they're having on public safety in particular. Uh, so he'll be bringing back a couple of options and proposals uh, one is to leave the fees as they are based on square footage. Another is to have a separate, different uh, registration fee just for the condos that's different from the, the single rep family residences that we have right now. Uh, and then in June, we'd like to uh, propose um, and request direction to send out the building permit fee study and, and have that refreshed by the consultants, by the rate consultants. Uh, so they can bring you better numbers and get that fund self-sustaining. Uh, so we've got questions and discussion. And uh, it's funny, the, when it turned into a PDF, it didn't quite keep the same formatting as it was as a slide presentation. Uh, there's just some reminders of how much we're collecting. Let's see, anything in the, else in there? No, I guess that's all that was in that, that packet. So in your, um, in your packets, uh, you have the two options. You have catch-up and five-year plan, catch-up and seven-year plan. Each packet has an executive summary on what does what do the cash flows look like for each one, uh, how much would we be investing to fix um, older items that, that need fixing, and, but more importantly, we have this, this draft uh, renewal and replacement resolution and on page two is where I'd be putting in the, the commitment numbers so that's what we're looking for is uh, direction this this evening and comments from council on what you would like this uh, renewal and replacement resolution to look like so that I can prepare that and bring it back to the next meeting all right no one <laughs> all right jump in First of all, thank you, and thank you, Michael, and everybody else that's done a lot of work on this uh, that's sorely needed, and it's kind of sad that we're here, but we are here. Uh, so I will make a motion uh, that we approve the draft resolution, or approve you to bring back a draft resolution uh, that includes uh, contributions on January 1st, 2025, at 3.6 million, January 1st of 2026, 2.5 million, January 1st of 2027, 2.5 million, and January 1st, 2028, of 3 million per your five year catch up plan. I just think the five year catch up plan is better than the seven years. Um, we, we need to get these roads, and for any of you who haven't been out in Crystal Beach and I had the fortune to go to lunch at the Henderson with my wife and daughters, and that new road out there is fabulous. It is sweet. And I would like every street and every road in the city of Destin to look like that. So, you know, I guess, I guess you want us to just te treat this little bites of the elephant, and then we can discuss, and hopefully and if we forget a bite, you know, I'm sure you'll remind us. So I, I will make that motion. Uh, because that's the biggest thing is whether or not we want to do a five-year plan or a seven-year plan and how much we want to contribute. All right, so i got a motion to hear second. I'll second it, and I, it's not that rare that I support Jim Bagg. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been Pastor uh, Steve yeah, Ferris tonight. <laughs> All right, so i got a motion and a second. Um, up next, uh, Councilman Destin. Thank you, Mayor, and I appreciate the work you guys did, too. You put an awful lot into it, um, and I support 
the fact that we have to fix our roads and the various other equipment we have. I've got a couple of questions though. When at the beginning of the uh, presentation you talked about phase two of the undergrounding and we're going forward and have voted to go forward with phase one, which is approximately what, 13 million? That, that's correct. The estimates came in lower than anticipated. Right, um, but the town center CRA and the harbor CRA, um, they committed funds to accomplishing uh, phase one and the, the funds that's com that are coming in from the electric franchise fee are filling in the gap more than I anticipated. We don't need as much of the Okaloosa Penny infrastructure money to accomplish phase one. And then phase two, if we decide to go to a phase two, um, my current projections is that the electric franchise fee would more than adequately cover a phase two depending on what you all decide is the phase two. And which is exactly the point that I'm trying to get to. Phase two is approximately 23 million? No. Um, How much is it? Phase two, so the city of Destin was chopped into seven pieces. Right. The, count, the, uh, the consultants said that we can do the seven pieces in any order that we wish. Correct. Um, piece two was to continue down Highway 98 from airport uh, past the Henderson, um, but there's no North of that area is all unincorporated, unincorporated city of Destin. Exactly. South of that is mostly just the, the park, the Henderson yep. Park. So the, that would not benefit a lot of our residents and not a lot of the electric users that are paying that franchise fee. Exactly. Phase three chunk was from the end of Henderson out to the Walton County line. We have a lot of residents south of that area, right, in the Crystal Beach area, and a lot of those neighborhoods are already undergrounded, so this would just enhance uh, what they have. But again, north of 98, that's all unincorporated uh, city of Destin. So we might think about that. Uh, and, and that's then, then phase four goes into, as they designed it, and each of these were estimated to cost about 15, 13 to 18 million dollars. Um, and shockingly, this phase is actually coming in less than that, you know, 18 million dollar, you know, high end. So uh, we're very impressed and very pleased with that. So the next phase uh, that was on the list was going north into West Destin. West Destin has a a few little pockets that are undergrounded, but for the most part, it's, it's not undergrounded. And it would be nice to just extend what we've done undergrounding on the, you know, on the US Highway 98. Um, it would be easy to extend that up. And then there's another phase that's basically Holiday Isle. So that's how the consultant separated them out. And like I said, each phase was made to cost between 13 to 18 million dollars okay we've, we've taken this the scenic route to my point which is if we don't go forward with those undergrounding projects which i'm not sure that the council will vote for and i'm not sure the community really wants us to blow another 15 million dollars on then that money would be available to greatly accelerate and enhance our replacement so that would just require a rewriting of the franchise fee ordinance with FPL. And, and, and we can do that. And we're the ones that's that correct. do that. Yes, that's correct. That's right. So that is also a funding mechanism that is, is realistically out there and would solve a large part of our funding shortfall, if yes. not all of it. Or and that would be a really wise thing to do as soon as we uh, we get this contractor for phase one done and we know exactly, exactly how much franchise fee money we need and we should know that uh, within the next 12 months or less. Right, and so while I hardly support the replacement program because we have to have it or we're gonna be all driving on dirt roads and not have air conditioners and all the other things that are associated, the part that I am still uh, contemplating and trying to come to a correct conclusion about is where we're going to get the money to the shortfall. I think we have a number of options. That's correct. And so the resolution I don't have a problem with, but we've got a lot of thought to go into where and how we're going to get the money. And, and I'm not sure the easy 
the, the knee-jerk reaction of most government entities is, is we're, we're just going to raise taxes and fees. That's, That's correct. not where we need to go, in my opinion. That's right. Uh, I hardly agree with the short-term rental. Uh, if, mm -hmm. you're, if you're using short-term rental to, to make money, you need to pay your fair share. So the only point I make is that the resolution saying we're going to do it, I don't have a problem with that at all. The nuts and bolts of how we're going to fund it, that's going to take a lot more contemplation on the, on the part of this council. Thank right. you. Councilman Schmidt. Thank you. Uh, I know our big pot of money is going to be coming up soon. And we have the option to rediscuss the TDC agreement, so that's, that'll be interesting. Um, thank you, Crystal and staff, for all of this. Um, like Mr. Bagby said, we're here, so I agree. Um, Mr. Bagby, did you want to add the half cent sales? Half cent penny allocations into your motion as well, or do you want to hold off? On no, I, I want to take bites of the ele elephant that so that we know address. <laughs> First, we have to agree we're going to do a re renewal and replacement fund and, and make the decision five or seven years. I don't, I don't want to sure. add all you know, there's three other mo two at least two other motions that have to be made. I don't want to put them all three together and then have it fall apart because. One person didn't like this part of the motion and another person didn't like that part of the motion. So I, I, I'm, to help Crystal, I want to keep it focused on, and then if we have a disagreement on one of these topics, that we discuss it up here. But okay. I, I appreciate the offer, and, but I'll, I'll make that motion next, or you can make that sure. motion next. I just, yeah, no worries. Um, so, uh, and when when is the... When does the table, the allocations of the FY25-32, like when does that get stamped into place as a final living, breathing? Uh, budget workshop number two is where we really zero in on exactly which projects we'll be doing in 2025. Fantastic. But we're going to, you know, this is our first draft. Uh, so we'll have an opportunity at budget workshop number two to discuss, you know, if you, if you see projects on here, some that are missing, you'd like to pull them forward, or some that you think are not at the critical point and you'd like to move them outward, we'll give you that opportunity to talk to whatever uh, sure. facility director that is and awesome. so, cash that out. Mr. Burgess, can you, when I go through the roads and then we skip, maybe it's just the way it prints out, but what, how, why do we skip like a whole page or a page and a half and then we get to like Ocean View Drive randomly? You know. Oh, because it's sorted, instead of sorting alphabetically, okay. it's sorted by uh, which ones are the most past due. Right, but like, for example, uh, Ocean View Drive is 11 years past due, and there's a number that are 30 years. I just didn't know huh. how. I, I, let me just look at how you're... How you're sure. Sure. Um, so... Next page shows like... These to 2024, and then you have these. 2014 to 14, 11. Oh, okay. I, I see. I see what you're talking about. So, um, there are certain roads that they're just adjacent to okay. something else that were in the area anyway, and so Got instead it. of having a remobilization Great fee, planning. we said, Fantastic. yeah. So if I, if I can add to that, uh, Councillor Schmidt, we looked at three factors. Uh, one, Crystal just mentioned, you know, the age past due. We also every other year do a condition assessment on our roads. That put that weighed in. And then in addition, uh, like she just said, adjacency. So like for, we just resurfaced Legion Drive where we're going to have the food truck festival here coming up starting Thursday. But we did not do the Legion Drive section that's residential. And there's a cul-de-sac that comes off of that and other streets. So while we're there, it just makes sense to me that we would go ahead and do those while we're there. And we would avoid mobilization costs and other uh, associated fees. Not fees, but costs. Okay. Um, I'm definitely in support of Mr. Bagby's original motion, and I'll probably have something as well to add. Um, for renewal and replacement, I would like to see under Parks and Rec to be considering more than just Morgan's lights and whatever the other item is. Um, I want to make sure we're taking into consideration the actual parks that are primarily used by the city of Destin residents, uh, that we make sure we allocate 
funds to renew and replace items like that. Um, we have ma major uh, uh, water runoff, flooding issues at uh, Threadgill Park. Uh, we have parking issues there. We have pocket parks in Destin that probably need to be touched up on. So I understand about the rust. Well, I don't understand about the rust of the lights, but um, there's a lot of other entities that are responsible for what happens at those parks as well that I want to make sure that the residents don't get forgotten about. Um, so, but that's for the budget workshop at a later time. I'll just go ahead and adding my comments now. Um, that's it for that, and then I'll throw the motion out next after the next one. All right, seeing no further discussion, I am Councilman Bagby's motion to call the vote. All right, five years it is. So I'll just throw a second motion out to uh, direct uh, city manager staff to allocate, reallocate Okaloosa half cent sales tax. So the proposed 34% recreation, 19% underground, stormwater, 7%, 40% public works. Is that? Second. Right, motion second. All right, any discussions? Yep, yep. All right, go ahead. Uh, this is getting into the issue about where the money's coming from. I'm not sure I have enough information to to tonight say that that's the correct allocation of those half cents. It's different substantially than what we're doing now, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. So when we recalculated and did the reallocation, uh, projects that are on that uh, primary list, that first page in the, the slideshow, were taken first into consideration uh, with undergrounding phase one as the top priority. Uh, so undergrounding phase one is not using any general fund money. That $15.2 million is completely covered by the remaining amount that's still in that uh, undergrounding allocation from half penny, and it's coming from the cash on hand that we have from the electric franchise and the um, I'm going to be borrowing some some money uh, once we have the the contract completely negotiated and we have three source three sources that will be repaying the amount that I borrowed so I'm looking at uh, approximately 11 million dollars because we estimate the whole thing is going to be 15 million so I'm using the cash on hand that I have um, and then the 11 million dollars will be paid back by the town center and harbor CRA districts and the electric franchise fee going into future years. And right. we're looking at bonds, probably a 30 year bond and to match up the timing of the revenues. I get that part. The, uh, the question I have is, is I would feel much more comfortable if we would set the funding end of this five year plan to a workshop where we could sit down and really look at the numbers and uh, as, a, as a group come up with something that we agree with uh, to just do it tonight and, and change our formulas on this and that and that is pretty haphazard and not well thought out so I will I will make a substitute motion that directs staff city manager to set up a workshop so that we can work out the details of the funding plan for the five-year renewal at uh, our soonest possible date Right, I have a sub for that. Do I have a, a motion? Substitute motion to, to yep. try to give these funding sources a little more contemplation. Okay. Second. Right, got a motion, second. Anything further? No. Okay. All right, Councilman Bagby. Thanks. And I understand your concerns. Um, I obviously had a fairly in depth uh, discussion with the staff today on this issue, and, and I think the SIP simplest way I, I won't support the substitute but the reason I won't is uh, for a couple of reasons number one the the funding scheme that we have the percentages we have anticipated uh, 30 million dollars or 28 million dollars whatever it was and they they were set at those levels to support a 28 to 30 million dollar undergrounding for just phase one uh, and then we thought it was going to be 50 for phase one and phase two, and now we find out it's going to be 26 to 27 for phase one and phase two. So we do have extra money here. The other thing I would say is we can come back and readjust this uh, distribution 
scheme these percentages at the next meeting or the next meeting, you know, or if some more information becomes available. What we're trying to do right now is to fund uh, a source of funding which doesn't raise taxes. And by the way, I agree with you on the short term rentals, whatever the max is we can charge them, they ought to be paying it for condos and houses. Uh, but I just, I don't see the need for us to workshop. The, the numbers are there. I mean, you, you can meet with uh, Crystal tomorrow, the next day, and go through when she expands the worksheets, because my concern was I had asked them to take it out over 20 years so that I could actually see uh, the cash flows over 20 years and the, you know, if we we're saying we're going to put an air conditioning unit here, that in 10 years we say we're going to replace that air conditioning unit and it's actually on the cash flow chart and, and they've done that and it's you know, all the credit goes to Crystal uh, and the rest of the staff that helped her but the, the money is there that doesn't mean that we won't change our mind and say no or uh, you know on the undergrounding we I can tell you the people uh, south of 98 that I've talked to both on Holiday Isle and in Crystal Beach, they wanted underground, not just for the aesthetics, but for the resiliency that it provides, because obviously we're the most flood prone and, and damage prone from a storm that would come in off the Gulf. So I would say, you know, I can't speak for your neighborhood or any of the other parts of Destin as, as well, even though I lived over off Stallman uh, for four years. But those parts want it. All we're trying to do tonight is give the staff direction and help fund the plan that we've already said we want to uh, catch back up on. So that's that's my All right. You want to jump in real quick for a button? No, I'll, I'll jump or, in real quick. Unless for else. this, yeah. Okay, and, and I understand your thought process. But the question is, we're going to vote tonight on, if we vote on the issue to... Uh, to reallocate this money toward the replacement and renewal. The question is, we have five, six, I don't know how many projects we have floating around that are pretty near and dear to some of our council members, the town center, the property by the bridge. Um, these things are all things that are gonna be funded or are not gonna go forward. If we take this right away and put it into this without contemplating the other avenues of revenue that we have, then we're gonna short term those. And and as you say, we could change this tomorrow night, the next meeting. If that's the case, then what's the rush to say, this is what we're gonna to do tonight? All right. You wanna yeah. go? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. That, uh, Mr. Bagby kind of answered some of my questions and I, you know, your, your expertise as far as the numbers and your expertise as far as the numbers go, I personally rely heavily on, on y'all. Um, and so that was gonna be my question is, is this not something that we need to, and along Mr. Destin's point is, is this not something we need to push back? And this is why I got my second is, is this something that we need to push back in order to let the citizens know that we're considering doing so? Um, now, I don't know that I will support the substitute motion, um, but those were just questions I had, and so. But you answered a lot of my questions, so thanks. All right, Councilman Schmidt. Thank you. Um, not in support of a workshop to discuss this right now, but I also think there might be a little confusion. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Dustin. The first motion that we just voted on was to allocate a five-year option to start proposing into a resolution correct that's so the you're going to take fund, that and put the it in a resolution fund allocation, correct as well as like the dollar the maximum that mr the maximum uh, funding i think uh, we didn't pass a, a minimum or maximum right. but we we put together approval to put a five-year plan together to renew and replace correct based upon certain dollar amounts and then how we're and then at some point in april and may we're going to talk about some ideas to fund the five million dollar shortfall that's correct right 
And those are the ideas about short terminal fees, taxes, right. or whatever the, you know, your ideas right, right. now. Right, all, all fees and, at the moment, then no, ta no taxes, right. My motion was to change the half cent penny tax which allocation. Is an in, yeah, that's an infrastructure surtax. Which is an infrastructure surtax, which the only change, the major change was underground 55 to 19, and then public works four to 40. Correct. So if we change this, that's not impacting the top five, six major projects no. that were, no, you it's, know, right? No, it's not, right. Okay, so this is, right. So I'm not sure if I misunderstood what your concerns were, but I, I, I think I understand it. I'm not worried about those projects, but if there's something that I'm missing that you were saying, I'd love to maybe be reminded yeah. of. My point being that not that it necessarily affects those five, but there are a lot of things we are contemplating that are not on that top five list, and and it limits our options. And uh, you know, changing the formula on the half cent impacts where we're going to get money somewhere else. And I think it's just you know a little premature to do that before we've gone through the workshop for the budgets to realize what expenses we are going to have and what we do want to spend money on. It's just, you know, as, as Jim says, we could change this at the next meeting. And, and that may very well be so, but I don't know what it behooves us to make a decision tonight short of the, uh, the workshops where we really get down to the real details of what we're going to spend and where the money's going to come from. It's just, you know, we're, we're changing a part of the formula of where the money is going to come from tonight, but not the rest. And when you change one part, it affects the remaining parts. So, Crystal, the half cent sales tax, what are, what are the perimeters of what we can and can't spend that on? So it's intended for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, we might have been stretching the meaning a little bit when we okay. used it to purchase uh, some land for parks development, but really a park is ultimately more city infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, but it's primarily intended for uh, roadways and stormwater, um, sidewalks, multimodal pathways, and uh, that sort of thing. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that was kind of to, what I'm gathering is, if, if this is an open source and we could throw it anywhere, then maybe we, we would need to look at it, but if it's very restrictive, this seems to be a, a no-brainer as far as there's only a couple places we can put that money. All right, thank you for that. All right. Any other questions? Just make one observation. Yeah, please. It open source and restrictive. We part of it is allocated to do undergrounding. Mm -hmm. it, it while it is restricted somewhat, the way it works is when we're paying for these items and not using general revenue, then the general revenue yeah, is. Putting... There's no such thing as a real restriction when you really look at it, or very few. Yeah, because everything can get fluid. Okay. All right, seeing no discussions, I will call for the substitute motion for uh, the workshop. Call on the vote. No. All right, no's. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> All right. All right. Anything else? No, um, I, I, but, yeah. but what I can propose is, you know, uh, no? <laughs> yeah, okay. let's, let's get that going first. All right. Okay. Yep, all right. <laughs> Calling the original motion. <laughs> At least she's consistent. <laughs> Got to gotta go down with it. All right. Yeah, hey, no, final words? But, but the one thing that I, I can propose, um, usually I bring the operating budget first because I, I need to make sure that we're... Um, budgeting for our operations and then at the second budget workshop that's when i bring in the the capital improvement component but this year it, it's pretty we we have a really solid first draft i feel of our capital improvement so if uh if council if you guys would like this i can bring both of the components to that first budget workshop on may 13th if you would like okay so Yes, okay, so I'll bring the combined view to uh, budget workshop number one, which will be held here on May 13th. 
Um, just be aware, and at, on May 13th, I'll just remind everybody, I don't have the actual numbers from the property appraiser for that component until uh, 1st of July, not officially, anyway. Um, and also, the economic de uh, department, uh, research department of the state of Florida, that's where I get all of these other state revenues that are shared with the city, and those numbers don't come out into the July to August time frame. So I won't have all of next year's funding sources at hand on, on that May 13th day, but I think we'll have a really good solid look and we can go as, as deep as you like into all of the details. Jim, do you have a final? Yeah, I just wanted to confirm with Crystal. So we approved the draft as written and that includes the minimum of 1 million and the maximum of the 5% or 5 million. So I just wanna make sure that you're okay with that and you didn't need a third motion, okay. Okay, no, I'm clear, and I'm, I'm going to bring that resolution to the next meeting. All right. Was there a third we needed to? You're good? No, that was, that was an option. Yep, yeah, so you're in there. It, okay. Sure awesome. All right, Crystal, you got everything you need. I do, thank you. Uh, so we'll use the min and max as drafted. Uh, we're, using, we're looking at the five-year catch-up program, and I have your numbers for January 20, 25, 26, 27, and 28. Um, for the general fund to put my funds in. Thank you very awesome. much. Thank you everyone for putting this together. That's a lot. Absolutely. Yes, okay. So, um, city manager hat back on. <laughs> All right, so the next item we have is uh, the Maddie Kelly outfall engineering design permitting contract with Jenkins. We have Scott Jenkins here in the, the audience if you have any questions. And Michael, I believe, or Joe Bodie. Joe Bodie is representing engineering tonight, and he can give a, a short synopsis if you like. All right, Joe, take it away. Okay, uh, we are looking at the, um, I'm sorry, Maddie Kelly outfall uh, kind of caught me a little off guard there. Um, uh, Scott Jenkins had done, had did the, gosh, my English is terrible, uh, stormwater master plan update and one of the projects was this area was looked at as a study, um, uh, as a, uh, uh, a study project to see how many projects could possibly come out of this through that whole entire area. The other part was the outfall itself. Most of that data has been um, captured through that stormwater master plan update, uh, which gave us a really good cost estimate from uh, Jenkins and Associates to uh, look at and design the um, Maddie Kelly outfall. <laughs> Mr. G, you have anything you got? We're good? Uh, I was just going to make the recommended motion. I move to direct the city manager to work with staff and Jenkins Engineering to move forward with the Maddie Kelly outfall project and approve the Jenkins Engineering proposal. Second. All right, motion is second. Any discussions? Mr. Jenkins has been here all night. Do you have anything to add to this? <laughs> uh, just real quickly. Yeah. Uh, Hit that button first. Button Hit that first. button. I haven't gotten to speak the last couple of times I've been here, so I'm out of practice. But um, Scott Jenkins with Jenkins Engineering, glad to be here. Appreciate the opportunity to work with the city as always. A um, couple of things just about the outfall that have really changed since the Stormwater Master Plan. One is the Joe Bay Joe's Bayou project that's right next door. Really cool project. Um, they're doing some offshore breakwaters that will really, really benefit this outfall, I think. And we're going to take the opportunity to work with staff and Taylor Engineering and maybe talk about maybe lengthening one of those if we can just to make sure that we keep the sand out of that outfall point. Um, and then also, 
If I can talk staff into it, I'd love to do something that's more like a little natural arch cover with a natural bottom for the little bit of extra treatment, a little better for the creatures that go back and forth. Um, so I think it'd be a, a good opportunity to do that. And I think that kind of fits in with some of your master plan language that's proposed. So, but happy to answer any questions that you guys may have. I don't see any, but okay. I've been here all night. Just wanted to give you a bite at it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Call on the vote. All right, there he goes. Eyes have it. So moved. Cool. All right. Thank you. Ms. Strickland. Okay, next we have our public information director, Tam Ray Young, Dr. T, coming up to talk about public participation at council meetings and workshops. And come on up. Okay, thank you. I believe it was maybe two meetings ago that council had directed staff to share some information about the process or processes that we take in encouraging public voices at various meetings, particularly council meetings. And we see a wide variety uh, throughout the, the meetings of attendance. So I wanted to just walk us through what we do and then you guys can let us know if you think there's anything that we're missing the boat on or other ideas that you might have for things we want to do. Okay. Andy, can you switch? Thank you. All right. So the, so the process in its very basic form is once a council meeting agenda is created, uh, the clerk's office initiates this, and the meeting date and time show up on the schedule of events online on the city's website. Upon publishing, an email goes to about 350 calendar subscribers, and then there's 65 separate in a categorical area for city council, and then 21 for special city council workshops, and they get an email directed to their inbox. And I did test it out. I really should have done that months ago, but this process reminded me to test it out myself, so I did subscribe to all of them recently just to make sure everything was working in good form. And then we send, the clerk's office sends a separate newspaper ad for any particular specialty public hearings, um, ordinance adoptions, things like that, at least 10 days prior to the meeting. We do post regularly at City Hall and on the annex and utilize bulletin boards. We promote upcoming city council meetings and special meetings such as the visioning session that we recently did that was well attended on our city Facebook page. And then of course we live stream the city council meetings and record for playback. And I'll give you a little bit more on the metrics on that in a minute. But I checked in with David just a minute ago and we do have 101 people that uh, total tonight that have viewed things and currently have about 63 people that have stuck it out with us tonight. This just shows a bit of the metrics that Facebook and Instagram provide so prettily for us. And I'm experimenting right now with Sprout Social and also Loomly and testing those out. They're, they're both um, social media management software that provides a lot of mechanisms to make everybody's jobs easier. And the data analytics, it's pretty crazy impressive what they can supply for us. So this in particular was just one I tried to capture for you all, showing they, typically the way the metrics run is about a 28-day period. You can extend it as far out as you want, but the 28 is, is really the shortest they show. So we're looking really good here, but I will be um, really clear that a lot depends on what we have just done. You know, we have these three really varied constituencies that we try to hit. And it's interesting because when we focus just on the locals, our social media metrics oftentimes don't look as good. So we're trying really hard within the office to be creative in the way we're looking at different things going on, not just in the community, but things that you know are our third constituency, those visitors and tourists like as well. And then we also started, gosh, I guess it was about a, um, four or five weeks ago, trying to have a better brand on the meetings that we're promoting when it comes to social media, so that hopefully over time there'll be a consistent look. When people glance at it on our Facebook or Instagram, they're gonna recognize it's either uh, something about an upcoming agenda for a city council meeting or something about a public meeting. For, for YouTube, um, I mentioned tonight we had about 101 people that viewed us and about 60 that are still online, but these are the metrics for that. And um, Andy and David Kidd and all of those guys do a good job about keeping up with that regularly. This is an area that I'm hoping to do more with within public information over the next year. We're starting to do more public service announcements, and I would like to see those interspersed with the, with the regular city council meetings and the specialty meetings that we host, public workshops. 
I did ask around. I'm lucky enough to work amongst some really great public information officers in the area. We meet regularly and just share ideas with each other. So I did reach out to them on things that they're doing and making sure that we're not missing the boat on anything particular. We're all, we're all really doing the same things, you know, making sure we're focusing on the website calendars, making sure our social media posts are up to date. The two probably biggest differences I noticed was Mikiko at Fort Walton Beach um, does a, a lot of live Posting, so that's something that I think I need to consider within the office for the future. And then Chance with Crestview really does utilize digital TVs to a great extent uh, in, in the lobby area. So I know I, I talked to my colleagues, and I know we did have a, a stronger TV system in the in the past, but there were some pros and cons to it. So I think if we were ever to move in that direction in the future, we need to do a, do it with a lot uh, better technology. And I briefly spoke to Andy and Michael about it in case that's something that we would want to do down the line. I, I, this next thing, I want to make sure that this is an average. When I asked Nick at the county what's an average attendance like, he said it was six to ten people, and Chance said Crestview was three to five. Obviously, for both the county, Crestview, as well as us, indicative of what we saw tonight, it makes just a big difference. If there's a controversial topic, a hot topic, it's going to change the, the whole game. But on average, that's what they said they see. Thanks. Then uh, within my office, we were looking around at what some other places do and how they're being creative in order to make sure that um, less that the meetings are highly attended, but more making sure that people feel like they have a voice in whatever outlet to share. So um, th these are just a couple of things that I read in one of the, the articles um, by Jeffrey Spivak and what he had to say. Um, a lot of it has to do with us going out, meeting people on their terms, in their places, and not necessarily thinking that they're going to be coming to a Monday night city council meeting. So you can see some of the um, things they did. They did pop-up events. They did um, set the table programs where they invited a certain key group that had a reason to be interested in the topic and then asked them to invite, you know, almost like the, the five friends sort of thing uh, to keep it going. So those are just kind of a super quick summary of, of the ways, the process that we engage in when it comes to public engagement and some of the things that we could consider. Certainly you guys noticed this, but there's more attendance when we do recognitions or promotions, like the Little League stuff. Like that's when I, I feel like it's shining in here and people people are, are excited or, or the holiday decorating events and things like that. So that may be something we want to see how we can do more of in advance. Do you want to say the one on the, the right side, Mary Ellen, that's actually a friend of mine from Hoosier Town in, in Evansville, Indiana, and I, it's, it's a reminder that, and that one's a silly one, and she'd kill me if she knew I was using it, but it's a reminder that I think that it's important for us to continue pushing this out, but really people are way more excited to hear from you all. Some of you are very active on social media, and that encourages great discussions. Others of you are fantastic about getting out into whether it's talking to Rotary or the Chamber of Commerce, breakfast, what have you. Um, and, then, and then I feel like I do notice a, a difference, not necessarily just here, but in um, the fodder that we have on next door and other places about topics. So I'm happy to entertain any questions or if you guys have suggestions for things that you would like to see yeah. any of us try out, whether that's through the clerk's office, like I said, which does a lot of public information. All right, up first I got Councilman Stevens. Thanks, Tamara, I really appreciate that. Um, I do have a quick question with um, uh, Civic Plus Listserv. Um, I noticed when those emails come through, it tends to come when the event starts. Um, is there a way to maybe adjust it to where maybe we could send an email out maybe in the morning and then also when the event starts? That is a great question. I'm not sure if Andy, do you know the answer to that? Yeah, we do. Um, that civic, um, it's clerk. And when you publish the agenda, that's the moment that that notification goes out. Um, and the records clerks publish it as soon as they have all the authorizations to do so. Um, we can, I think I actually have an open ticket to look into additional notifications. It just hasn't risen to the surface of um, staff time at this point. Yeah, so we'll keep that on our list, yeah. and uh, we'll go over that in our um, senior leader meetings. And yeah. 
I'll pull that ticket up and bring it forward. And, and a bit along the lines of that, I did think that the notification system to sign up for it, to subscribe, it's not at all terribly difficult, but it's a little confusion. It's a little confusing the way that categorical areas are. So I think that we do need to clean that up. So where, that was going to be my question. So just to follow it all the way through, where do they go to sign up for the subscription as far as the, the email of notification? If you go to the city's website, uh, the home page, and then there's an agenda area and a, a subscription area. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Councilman uh, Schmidt. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Tamara, for putting this together. Uh, a few questions, comments, uh, possibly motion to do some more stuff here. Um, I appreciate the insights that are being provided here, uh, but you know, for example, we just recently started promoting our meetings about a month ago on Facebook. So, you know. Most of the stuff that's being shown is stuff that we are already doing or not, you know, haven't been doing, um, you know, we're advertising the newspaper. Um, have we looked into like Facebook advertising and utilizing geographic locations and, and putting those ads for meetings and things like that? Yeah, that's a good question. And we do have in the budget that you'll see uh, the next, the first round of budgeting, we do have an area for that that we're requesting for more social media ads that can be targeted. Right, but like we pay the newspaper, I believe, for mm -hmm. that, right? So in theory, we already have a budget for advertising, right? For the public hearings? Yes, out of the clerk's office, we do, correct. For meetings, mm -hmm. okay, gotcha. Um, the subscribers, 365, what have we done, have we, have we done anything to increase that? The 356. We've, yeah, we've, we've worked a little bit with the Destin Chamber of Commerce, and when we go into any groups, like with their Destin Forward class and other places like that, we're, we're working to try to encourage them to subscribe to it. But I do think, um, I do think after having just signed up for it, I can see where there's some, right. we probably need to beef some areas up to make it nicer. Right. So it's, I think it's important for me, um, maybe others, is that we... Um, you know, the goal is, is how can we get more engaged citizens to mm -hmm. participate rather than when it's just controversy right. on, on the docket here? Uh, because as I share with a lot of people in the community, more stuff happens in these meetings y'all don't come to that are not controversial that you're going to see the biggest impact on your streets. You know, the, 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 the meetings that you're not coming to or we're making the biggest decisions on the LDC, on the comp plans and all of these things, undergrounding, all this stuff. You know, it's just because it's not about 414 or, you know, Main Street. There's a lot of stuff going on. So um, I, I also think I want to make sure for me, you know, you do a great job on some of the posts and sharing different things that are going on. But I want to make sure that our office, PIO, whatever the department is, I know it's just you, right? It's not a department, but actually, or you have one person, I actually right? have right. a part-time person That's right, you right do. now. I, I, I want to make sure, though, that we are differentiating what I feel like is social media management mm -hmm. yep. versus a PIO, right? Absolutely. So we can hire a social media manager for good price, save money, but to me, it's how do we get these citizens to be participating? And so... I, I appreciate some of the stuff you got, but most of it is just stuff that we've been doing, which isn't working in my opinion. So, um, you know, I, I want to do more. And I don't have all those answers because I'm not the expert. Um, you know, I don't think the newspapers are the things to do anymore. I think, you know, there's other options out there for advertising. The workshops, I think we added a, a, a workshop that somebody mentioned a, a minute ago that we asked y'all to do and I think one person came to the, oh, it was a council. Yeah, it was a councilman. Right. Yes. You know, and so I, I just, I want to see how we can push forward. So um, I would prefer that I'd like to put a motion to direct city manager to bring back a policy and resolution form to plan our public information procedure and plan for the city of Destin that the council can review and bless and provide guidance on in resolution form and policy. 
That's just a motion I'm making. All right. I got a motion. Do I hear a second? All right. Dies for a lack of a second. No, no, no. I'll second. Okay. I'll second it. There you go. Sorry. All right. So, uh, Councilman Bagby. Yeah. Before before we get to that point, I guess for that um, number one, I think you're doing a great job. I think you and the team are doing a great job. Uh, and I probably part of me knows a lot about this, having run uh, one of the larger marketing agencies in this area for two or three mm -hmm. years, but. Uh, Part of me doesn't know anything about this when you get down to a certain level. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, we, we talked about, there's really a couple of different issues here. Civic engagement that used to be through the committees. So we had active committees. They actually had uh, a purpose. They had, you know, work that they were doing. It, it was, that benefited all of us. And they were excited about serving on those committees and then they would tell their neighbors and you have seven people that live all over the city and they tell their, you know, three or four or five, eight, ten neighbors, hey, this is what we're doing at the parks or this is what we're doing on the roads or this is what we're doing on the sidewalks. And they, you know, it, it didn't all have to come here and we, we've lost a little bit of that and I know Sandy and, and the staff are trying to work to get that back. but. The, the committees really are part of that civic engagement solution. On the information distribution, uh, yeah, we have, I think, 37,000 Facebook followers on our City of Destin uh, Facebook account. It's, at least that's what Facebook says. The uh, uh, Destinites has like 9.6 or 9.7 thousand. Uh, followers so my question would be if it's just getting the information out you know do we have a list of and I don't want to call them influencers because that sounds like I know what I'm talking about which I don't but people you know the homeowners associations Indian Bayou Destiny Destiny East you know all these different homeowners association presidents or secretaries uh, the Destinites lady I, don't, I can't remember her name right now but you, you Whitney, do? there's several of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Three of them. You know, if we could, do they? Do we send out the agenda them and to them? All those, that group. I mean, I know you sent it to us. I know you send it to everybody that signed up for it through the city of Destin. But if we send it to folks that have these followings and say, hey, could you publish this just so all your people know? And you know, if you have any questions, you're in the know now as opposed to you're just another citizen that you got to sign up at the, for the distribution. Then they kind of get that information and they disperse it among their 9,700 followers or their 242 houses or how many ever in their, uh, their homeowner association. And then you get, but really to me, the engagement is if we can get these committees back engaged and get folks, uh, give giving them where they can actually do something like public works and public safety gets to spend money, you know, Hey, I, well, I was on that. I think a couple of us up here were on that, that that's the public engagement. Cause you're right. I mean, I'm not, I'm here half as long as Mr. destin has been here on the council, not in the city. He's been here forever, but, uh, you know, if they're building the Emerald grand, by God, you cannot find a, spare square foot in this room but if they're talking about re sodden you know one of the ball fields up at mark morgan sports center uh we're going to get six people and so that that's what i would ask y'all to look at is help re-engage committees but also look at who if we can get people to help us get the word out because I think that's one of the other things we're trying to do here. But I think you're doing a great job. You asked for ideas. You know, I, I don't know how next door works, but I know all my neighbors are on next door. I'm not because I got tired of going, God, 
get, get a life, but... It is frustrating. We are on there quite a lot. Our mayor is on there a lot. We oh. Go back and forth. We are, we are, do, we are doing our best yeah. to keep up with it all and Just to post the agenda stop misinformation, but share good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. I only go on when I'm in a really good mood because it'll get you <laughs> real quick. <laughs> all right, Councilman King. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, I, I don't... I don't know that it's ne no offense. I don't think it's necessary to bring this back in resolution form. I wanted to hear what everybody else's opinion was. Mr. Baggin makes a great point. There's 30,000 people between Facebook and however many more on all the different Destin pages. If we can just, I think if you can just share hot button item, items or the agenda, not even the agenda, but just a, hey, we're having a city council meeting tonight, yeah. it'd be a pretty good metric on who, on whether this is even going to work before we go making a resolution for it. So uh, if you can, if you can, I think you can get a pretty good idea as far as the law of averages goes. If you, if you put a post on there with the, hey, we're doing a city, we got a city council meeting tonight, a couple few hours before the meeting, we'll see how many people show up and that'll give us a pretty good idea of what, what we're doing here. All right, I got a motion on the table right now. Any one one quick thing on that. Yeah, it's it's gotta be more than a couple hours. People are yeah. busy. You know, you got to do it a week out. You got to do it before you mail it to us. Here's here's what is looking like it's going to be on the city council agenda a week. I might be able to plan a week out if you tell me tomorrow you're having a meeting. It, I'm not coming because I already have tomorrow, the next day. I, I have through Sunday planned right now, unfortunately for for my life. So you got to get it out earlier i'm Thank saying you. a few hours as an example but if you can remind people oh yeah like yeah. you're saying i mean yeah. if i see it and i got nothing going on which is pretty much never never <laughs> <laughs> and that's my point you know but but we have people who are like oh man i tuned in on youtube i got here as quick as i could you know what i mean uh, so, <laughs> so. All right. See, no further discussion. Can, can we clarify what the motion is? Uh, that was... The motion was to bring back a policy in resolution form to um, specify the plan, exact plan, the strategies, and procedures for in increasing our engagement at these meetings and workshops further than what they already are. Hmm. Yeah. So we would need... So in order to do this, we would need to know what works already. And I don't think, I think that's where my pause is, is I don't think we know exactly what works. So help me understand how I'm, I'm missing it. Well, you seconded it, did he? He probably doing it for discussion. Yeah, and that's the point I was trying to make, trying to make a discussion. Yeah, I would go ahead, Kevin, but I'm, I'm thinking we're a little premature on the resolution. It's all good. So, I mean, uh, to be blunt, uh, we got a, pr a presentation tonight of what we are doing. Mr. Bagby says Tamara's doing a good job. I'm sure she is doing a good job, but the rooms are still empty. So whatever we have been doing is not working, right? We have 356 subscribers to our email account. So why is it 356 people? So how do we get to the next step? How do we get there? What are the actionable items that we are gonna to take to promote this, to fix it? And so for me, I was wanting a policy in place to show us how we are gonna get there, rather than us just throwing out some ideas up here tonight. I'm sure Tamara will take some of them. Maybe she won't, that's fine, that's her, that's, this is her job. Um, but I was hoping a policy would come back that we could all agree on and put it in writing to understand that position because we need more engagement. We need to do things better. So that's my purpose. Answer. Can I make one observation? Uh, and, I, and I should probably just shut up and defer to Mr. Destin, but uh, in the 12 years that I've been doing this, when people are here, it's because we, uh, I can't use that word, we mess something up staff met, messed something up uh, or the people are not happy about something that we or the staff had no control over. That, that's just my experience. That's not always true. Like Tamara said, you know, they're all here for the, to get their trophy for the holiday lights or the parade or the little league or softball or whatever. Uh, but when they're packed, when we're truly packed and they stay after the first 10 minutes, 
they're not happy, and that the citizens are not happy. And when we have no one here, it's usually because they have better things to do or they feel like they allocate their time and say, you know, I'm pretty happy. I don't want to go down and listen to them talk about the linear park. You know, I can watch it on TV if I'm really that interested. Uh, that, that's just my experience. So I'm not sure our goal is to get the room packed. I, I say all that to say this. My goal is not to have the room packed every night. My goal is to have citizens engaged through the committees, through our Facebook account, through the thing, so that, but there's always going to be that person. I didn't know they were talking about Buck Destin Park tonight or a festival or whatever next to it. Right. I get that, but I don't think, my, my goal is not to have this room packed. My goal is actually to have everybody so happy <laughs> that there's nobody here and they trust us to manage their money, their tax, you know, the tax dollars they give us uh, entrust in us to manage that properly and to do the best we can. And in in the fact that we don't have a lot of folks here kind of tells me that we're, right. we're almost on the I right I don't track. disagree with you, uh, Mr. Bagley. It's my, not my goal to pack this place either. Um, it's about having people aware of what is going on and being engaged and, and, and know what's going on. I can't speak to what you did 15, 20 years ago up here, but it's 2024 and things change. Right, so what we do today should be different than what we did 10, 15, 20 years ago. And it's, no, it's not, unfortunately, because we're still publishing in the Northwest Florida Daily News. So we're still doing that. I get it's Florida statue, but there's also other ways. Mr. Stevens brought up something about civic clerk. That, that item has been mentioned before, and I think you said there's a ticket, Andy, which I appreciate, but there's things that are broken in our system that are not working. And so... I know you spend time with different people than I do, and that's fine, but when I spend time with a lot of people, parents, families, neighbors, we ask about what's going on in the city. A lot of them are upset about the proactiveness, and so it's, well, did, why don't you come be part of it? Well, I didn't know. I didn't know. And a lot of it's that, that's their fault sometimes, but they still don't know. They don't know because we're not out there. We're not sharing it. We're not doing it. Dropping it on a next door app where I guarantee you there's probably about 10 people that are the loudest people in those groups on Facebook and next door that are the loudest ones. And that's fine, but there's a lot more citizens invested in those top 10 people in those groups. So it's okay if y'all don't want to do it, but um, I just feel like we're missing something and I'm trying to put that, that finger on something to help guide the PIO department to get us there. And I would like the council to help do that. And that, if this isn't how y'all want to do it, that's, I respect that. It's fine. But that's just my, my reasoning here. So it's not to get people in the doors. Because I'm like you. No news, no news is aware. good news. The educate. Educate. I mean, we post things in the annex in the city hall. That's fantastic. I'm sure there's people that come through city we, hall in the annex. But and we why, do. why aren't we posting them at Destin Elementary School? other places I, I don't know there's just we've been doing that for who knows how long let's look at something different now go ahead sorry that's okay I was just gonna say we do and we are we do a lot of uh, public presentations and things like that I didn't realize that that was what I should have been referencing tonight but we certainly do that on a regular basis hardly a week goes by that we aren't meeting with some constituency out there so that happens all the time and sometimes it's the mayor and I going out together sometimes it's just me sometimes I'm rounding up whoever is the appropriate like senior leader um, and, I, and I don't know if it matters but I do think that we need to remember the changing landscape as you suggested it is 2024 we have 170 something now people that have viewed tonight so we may not see them but those to me those are engaged citizens they're taking their night to go on and watch this and to me that is really right, important to remember and I agree with you but they're mainly here because of a circus that's going to be on Legion Drive and 414 Main Street it's been all over next door app and Facebook Unfortunately, well, I disagree with that because that's why they're probably watching and they were watching because of those two hot items, right? Right, but not just tonight. Like, we, we're right. having really good attendance lately okay. at the live streams. It's fine. It's fine. Let's try and law and let's, here we go. It's fine. Time to do it. It's just called to vote. Just, just to clarify, the, if the motion is to ask the staff to bring back suggestions and they can put it in the form of resolution that 
that we say yes or no, or if that's what the motion is, I don't have a problem with them bringing back recommendations. However, I would point out that the ads we take out in the newspapers and some of the other things are mandated by state law, and we're not going to be able to say we're not going to do that and we're going to take that money and do this. Those things we have to do. So, you know, I'm, if we're just asking them, if, they're, if we're just asking them to, to bring back recommendations, she's made a number of them tonight. I guess she'll do it again and write them down as, as in the form of a resolution. Is that what we're telling her to do? do a resolution. Right now, the motion is resolution. I got two locked in. So if we want to, I, I think she's got as much information as she can do, whether we vote on it or not for, for bringing back. But let's at least go through this vote and see where the resolution lies. And then if we need to make a, another motion to direct staff, then I, we can go that route. Or, I mean, I trust Dr. Young. I think she hears us up here, and I'm, I'm sure she can bring us back what she's gathered in tangible actionable step form after this. How about if we later. modify the motion or do a substitute to recommend staff to bring back recommendations to us? And at that point, we will perhaps pass a resolution if we think they should be adopted. Okay. You want to do that? Uh, clerk, can you clear the, the vote? Well, that's a substitute. That's, it's that's a, a sub. Okay. So do we have a motion for the sub? I'll Sorry. second it. All right, there we go. Get okay. my rules in. All right, so a motion is second. We need to clear the first to start the second. Yes, please. All right, so we're at the substitute motion for bring back recommendations. All right, so I'm calling vote for the sub. Which is what tonight was, the recommendations and what they're doing, so. Here we go. Repeat what you just said, sir. I didn't hear what you just said. That's what tonight's request was, was to bring back plans and how recommendations to get more engagement what we're doing and what we can do you scared them with the over so if that's, i don't think that's how i heard your initial uh, motion i heard it is a a formal procedure. i have to go back and listen to it yeah as you stated formal procedure not oh i'm talking about why we're here tonight my original one two or three weeks ago meetings ago sorry not the current motion tonight's gotcha okay i understand thank you sir all right, so eyes have it on the substitute motion. So moved. What an informational piece. <laughs> All right, Crystal. Okay, so the, the last item we have under the city manager's reports this evening is announcements. Take it away, Dr. T, again. Thank you. All right. The Dustin Community Center will be hosting a community yard sale on Saturday, April 6th from 8 a.m. to noon. To reserve a spot and learn more details about that, you'd want to call the Community Center. There will be a public workshop on April 10th at 5.30 here at the Annex for the visioning workshop for the Destin City Center and city-owned properties in the Town Center CRA and Harbor CRA districts. Two or more members of the City Council or other city boards and committees may be in attendance at that workshop. Along with that, we did put out a QR code this morning on our city's Facebook page next door and some other places. We sent it to the Destin Chamber of Commerce to hit all of their members to direct people to a survey on the town center. We would really love everyone listening in and everyone in attendance in this room to please take advantage of filling out that particular survey. Again, there's a QR code out there that's floating around, but there's also a direct link and you can get to it on our city's um, uh, homepage of our website. We wanted to remind you all about FDOT's efforts to retime the signals along US 98 to help improve traffic flow, especially now that we've entered our tourist season. That 98 arterial currently serves an average of 374,000 vehicles per week during peak season, and FDOT retimed 22 traffic signals along the approximate six and a half mile corridor, um, which does include the one intersection at SR 293 at Commons Drive. Based on the non-intrusive Bluetooth detection data, there's a weekly time savings of about 5,500 vehicle hours per week because of the retiming efforts. And then lastly, on April 15th, before the council meeting, we'll host a meet and greet for everyone to be able to come and introduce themselves and ask questions of the three city manager finalists. And that meet and greet will take place here at five o'clock, and then the regularly scheduled city council meeting will be at six o'clock. And that's all I have. 
Thank, Thank you, Tamara. So and uh, would you please confirm the um, SRS who is looking at our city uh, that they'll be holding their first public meeting on April 10th and they would like to generate as many responses to that survey as possible for beforehand. Is that correct? That is correct. So April 10th at 530. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have no public hearings this evening. Uh, so the last section is uh, comments, presentations from mayor, council members, and city attorney. Awesome. So with that, uh, Councilman Stevens. All right. I got one thing. Uh, since we were talking about uh, public engagement, um, I actually have an open seat on a local planning agency. So if anyone's interested for that role, um, feel free to go to the website and apply for it. Um, and I guess since my position is only until November, it'd be a good trial run for someone to try it because they'd only be there for November unless they get reappointed. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, Councilman Gow. Thank you, sir. I have a couple things. Uh, first, although I uh, appreciate uh, the citizen Napier giving me credit for that uh, fix to his, his water issue, we all know I don't have that kind of power. Um, <laughs> it was just the right time, the right place. That's really uh, public works and, and the city manager, acting city manager, really being on, and this engineering actually being on top of that. I just happened to show up at the right time, right place. Um, secondly, I would like to ask a question of staff. I'm getting a lot of calls and, and questions about the uh, parking lot at the property above the bridge. People are asking why we can't park there since the citizens pay the tax dollars. I've already had that discussion with you, but I'd like the citizens to understand why they can't park there So uh, at this time so that uh, we can rest their minds. Well, uh, one of the issues would be uh, when the building was taken down, we've got some stormwater issues that uh, have caused erosion going down the uh, back side of that hill there, and it's causing scour uh, underneath that pavement area. We're working on it and stabilizing that um, at, at this point in time. I don't, uh, I don't think that I have anything else on that. You yeah, mentioned so, FDEP. So to summarize, it's a erosion issues that we're concerned about, and also the, the seawall down below is, is uh, destabilized. Anyway, there are a lot of safety factors involved. Thank you so much for that. Uh, finally, I, I, last council meeting, I told you guys I might not be here for this one because I was supposed to have surgery March 26th. It was postponed till April 17th. So I should be here for the April 15th meeting, uh, surgeries, hopefully April 17th, and then I'm, I, I will do my best to be for the first May meeting. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Councilman Dustin. Thank you, Mayor. I think I'll leave the uh, issue alone. <laughs> <laughs> I will give it a rest tonight. I don't have anything. Oh, there you go. Plead in the fifth. All right. Councilman Bagley. Just want to thank you all for uh, helping us get the renewal and replacement plan something we've been working on for a while uh, underway. Also want to thank uh, Miss Lisa and Captain Fulgham for uh, the work, the support that they gave uh, Monday night, last Monday night. God, I've got so much going on. Last Monday night at the community center. Uh, great job. We had 274 people come to Destin in the middle of spring break. We had people from Pensacola to Walton County uh, come down and get a community get a update legislative update uh from our congressman and so great support from the staff at the community center and from the sheriff's office and i just wanted to say thank you great all right councilman king thank you sir <clears throat> just real quick i think the um the i just wanted to say it's sort of similar you know we 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 got a great community here we've got a great town um the citizens here are second to none, I think. We've got a, you know, something I've seen is when things go on, we don't have, we don't have eyes in the back of our head, you know. We've got, that, I mean, we've got hundreds of issues going on at all times. And so I think, you know, I've gotten a lot of text messages and emails and phone calls and about certain items uh, that I would not have known about had it not been for the citizens of Destin. So I think, you know, it reminds me of like, this is going to be a really silly analogy, but, but flock of turkeys 
is sitting out there feeding. If there's 10 of them at all times, one of them's got their head up looking for trouble, which that may be a really silly analogy, but that's kind of, I heard that on a podcast the other day. That's what it reminds, that's what our town kind of reminds me of. Is somebody's always paying attention to something and what's going on in their backyard, and we may not always see it. So um, just want to say thanks uh, for the involvement that we do have. Um, and while that may be a silly analogy, I think it, it pertains. Um, so that's all I've got. Thanks. Absolutely. All right, Councilman uh, Schmidt. Appreciate it. I just got one thing. Um, back a while ago, uh, we had previous staff members were pursuing uh, different parcels of land for us to purchase at, near Morgan's, near off Calhoun, by the other park as well. Um, and I believe uh, the one by off Calhoun, there's, we're not sure where it ended. And so I would like to ask uh, city manager and attorney to check on that, call the resident, see if they're still out there. Do y'all need a motion form to do that? Or since it was already in the works previously, can they do that? Just to reach out and, okay. You guys feel good with that or? Do you know which person you're talking about? It's 446 Calhoun from what I could tell, if I recall correctly. All right, they seem to be all shaking their head yes. Okay. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. All right. If you, um, so, oh, go ahead. Um, after you. All right. Uh, I'm going to start with the uh, Destin Linear Park or Trail. I, I think we need a, we're going to have to have a motion on if we're going to call it a park or a trail because that's just been an inside joke at this point. Um, so council has directed to not have it come back for 60% until we have the uh, confirmation of the easements. Um, that we're going to be looking for. So we have put together after a call last Friday. So sorry you guys didn't get this over the weekend. I made it this morning. Um, so we have a plan of mailing these out. There's, I think, 24 parcels in general, but there's really just a handful that we need to make what that 30% plan that we approved happen as planned. Um, so we have a small little project involved to try to um, give them as much information as possible and to make sure that they have everything in their power before they make a decision. And so this is going to be uh, step one is we're going to mail out a little flyer, possibly some of the maps, and um, you just let them know exactly the project is coming and it's going to be, um, you know, in, right next behind their back door in their backyard uh, in the easement of PL, and that, you know, I'm going to be going to their house. I didn't want to go to them unannounced. So that's kind of why I wanted to bring it up to you guys. Uh, we're going to mail this to them. And if they have any questions, it's going to Tamara's cell phone and uh, email the business, not a, not our personal. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> and then from there, if they had questions, I was going to go door knock those parcels and see if they had anything face to face. And then finally, we would end up going and getting legal involved to make sure um, that we had all the pop proper documentation for the construction easement as well as the long term maintenance easement that we need. Uh, we wanted to be as communication to them as possible without invading privacy and kind of getting making it get weird um, all in a hopes to move this along as fast as possible and get the 60 percent back to you guys which again like i said to reiterate you guys don't want to see it until we have a locked in land agreement and so this is staff and my uh, way of trying to get to that locked agreement with the 30 percent plans without uh veering away or, or remodifying to get to you guys so uh we just wanted to over communicate to you guys as well and get a get a motion to uh approve this if you like it like this or if you guys have any suggestions on how we should further go forward but other than that kim do you have anything to add yep, i think you got it all right good deal um so comments suggestions and or a motion anything jump on in yeah I'll, uh before i make the motion I, I would, if we know the owners of those parcels or the businesses that own those parcels or whatever, we, we might want to socialize that because it might be somebody's father-in-law, it might be somebody's business partner or somebody I, I sold a house for or, you know, they eat once, twice a week at Dewey's Harbor side or something and we might warm, have some personal lead, relationships yeah. with some of these people we may not have any okay. and so then you just go cold knock on doors yeah 
but that's kind of the last. Yeah, I don't. I'm not least wanting to do this, but I'm, I'm happy method. to. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I don't know who they are. I may we know. Do. We, we do. We actually have a, have a list, so we could email the list to the council. Yeah. I like um, of course, you won't be able to discuss it with each other, but if you know anyone on the list, you yeah, could shoot it back certainly to yeah. reach out to them yeah. and. And well, reach out to you or the city manager to coordinate mm -hmm. and say, okay, you know, the mayor doesn't have to go talk to this person or this person or whatever. Love it. <laughs> Just made the mayor's job easier. Well, probably not. Oh, microphone, know. microphone, my bad. Probably not because I don't know any of them most likely. But. You will. You'll recognize the names. Uh, they're they're um, along the same path as the FPL undergrounding uh -huh. for the most part. So it's Harbor and yeah. 98. So. Yeah. I know Dewey knows all of them. So he can go, he can go knock on doors. So absent that, I don't know what you want the motion to look like. So we were for precautionary. I, I thought the mayor should, I advised him to come to council and just let you all know, A, in case anybody got phone calls saying, what's that flyer that came out? You all would be aware. And I wanted to make sure that you all were good with, you know, the mayor going and mailing that out and then just generally educating the public. I will make the motion since the mayor can't take those actions without council approval i will make the motion to send him forward i appreciate second. that motion is second i'll call the vote i don't see any other discussion i was up here and i saw the other the past mayor get his wrist slapped so i was like all right <laughs> sorry who provided the second okay thank you all right thank you guys for that all right, up next, um, talking about funding gaps. Um, so the TPO is going well as far as the Crosstown Connector. Uh, Austin Mount, the executive director for Emerald Coast Regional Council, has been a huge wealth of information and advocate for us. And so we were able to put the Crosstown Connector back on the long range mobility plan. Um, the last meeting in, I guess, two months ago, the one coming up now is going to be on April 16th. Um, so we have some agenda items coming up on the 15th that will really confirm or not confirm that this will be an avenue. Uh, I, I believe it will be. And so he has advised me to um, write another letter to the chairman this year, uh, Chairman Boyles out of Okaloosa County. Uh, commissioner to just reaffirm what we're doing what we're looking for and that the Okaloosa Walton transportation the TPO uh, would endorse this letter to F dot district 3 um, the goal would be that we have some abilities to get funds from the state through TPO and we're just month after month following that process and this is just the next process uh, to move that forward with the recommendation on, at their board level. So that's on their agenda item. Uh, I just wanted to get this ahead of time. So if you guys have any recommendations or anything, we can totally uh, bring this to the staff level and revise anything or just approve them to make a letter. This is a sample that I created through Austin and um, it just has the basics on there. I think one thing that uh, Crystal already wanted is the 24 to go to 25 and potentially us going from the three to the four unless that's going to be undoable uh, from their level uh, so with that uh, councilman Destin we'll make the motion to send the letter forward second Thanks. motion to second any further discussions I'll have more information after the April 16th meeting if they've accepted it if they accepted it it's a valuable available option if not then it was a good try so call the vote all right thank you for that last one i promise all right uh we have a parks foundation coming online very soon i'm ecstatic for it i'm excited for it uh and i figured what better way to throw support at it than having a mayor's charity ball uh black tie event dinner and go all the way with it. We've been approached by an event coordinator in the area who wants to put it on for free. They're also doing the um, reinstated uh, 
Mullet Fest. I don't think they're going to be calling it the Mullet Fest anymore. Uh, so I wanted to bring this to you guys. Basi yeah, it won't be the Mullet Fest like we all know. Um, but with that, they are putting, trying to put a name for themselves together, and they wanted to do this since uh, Dustin hasn't done many festivals. Uh, so basically, my only ask is that we direct staff and the city attorney to come back with an agreement with them to see if we like it. Right now, uh, they just kind of gave me this one pager of, we're gonna help, uh, the staff will help consult and do, and there's no funds or fees that the city is going to incur. But of course, I wanted to make sure we go clear the liability and we get it in lawyer form. So just your guys' thoughts on uh, having mainly Kim go into an agreement to bring back to us a mayor's charity ball in conjunction with uh, White Tie Emerald Coast Entertainment Group. So with that, uh, if you guys have any objections or anything, uh, this was an ask by our legal team to go through the process. Yeah, yeah. So the event is not my ask. How to set it up? How to a, set it up in a legal contract is my ask instead of just doing it fly by the yes. seat of our pants. That's all. Yeah, we want to make sure ask that it's is from the mayor. <laughs> yeah, my ask her legalese. I know. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion. But it's going to gonna be our ball. Direct the staff to assist the Parks Foundation and the mayor in setting up a black tie. Oh, it don't sound so. It's going to be a party. Why do you sound so upset about it? <laughs> well, I'll have to go you gotta, all right. Dewey's got the second. All right. Any discussions, comments? Does that mean we have to go? No. You don't have to go, but I'm going to be knocking on your door for some uh, donations. <laughs> It will be black tie. How many black tie events, though, do we have in the area? Yeah, well, I'm excited. I think we're going to have something very special that will be unlike anything else in the area to draw a crowd. I'll leave it at that. We might even have a Grammy performance. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. With that, I am done. City Attorney, do you have anything, Kim? I have um, one thing, and that is just an update with respect to the city manager selection. So just to remind you all, the selection committee has done their first round of interviews. There are three um, candidates that they have recommended to the city council for interviews, so you should have gotten um, contacted by HR to schedule your um, individual interviews with those candidates. Once you do that, that's between now and about April um, 11th or so. Once you have completed those interviews, there will be a meet and greet for those candidates right before the next city council meeting. So that would be April 15th at 5 p.m. It will be open to the public, of course, and then the regular meeting will start immediately after that hour at its regular time of 6 p.m. Um, and then at that meeting, you can discuss the candidates and decide what you want to do from there. You could, of course, um, select one for a contract, which we would bring back in May, or you could uh, reject all, want more interviews, whatever you deem fit at that time. All right, thank you so much. All right, at this point, we are down to public comments. So anyone left in the room who wants another bite at the apple, you got another three minutes. Pure entertainment, I love it. All right, you're just here for the fun of it. All right, so seeing no further comments, I will call this meeting to adjourn.